<clears throat> Have you sorted out your sound? Yeah, I'm recording now. So the problem with apple juice... So anyway, as a prerequisite to all of this, before you start, sorry. Um, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm a sound engineer by certification, a uh, university degree. But I'm a bit of a cheapskate when it comes to hardware and uh, equipment. I like to go for the equipment that's more difficult to use than others because I, I enjoy the challenge. Um, but of course, that does come with those challenges, which are... It's running on, uh, you know, this, this device here. It's, um, it's an old boy. It's, it's got some legs on it and it's running on an old protocol that, you know, no one uses anymore. But, you know, I like to give these these bits of hardware some life because I think they have some character to them. You know, they've got a bit of personality and sometimes they like to play nice like they are at the moment and other times something just goes wrong and, you know, they're, they're on their last legs. They need... Um, they need that TLC. So at some point through this, we may be talking and all of a sudden my sound will just sound like crap. And you need to tell me uh, and tell everyone that, you know, here we go. The old boy's had its time and he needs, needs, needs a rest. Uh, but it's a quick, easy fix that I can do. I just need to, you know, give it some persuasion with a hammer. And uh, it gets back into gear. So that's just a prerequisite to all of this. Hopefully it won't happen too many times, but I can pretty much guarantee that it will happen. Um, today I've, you know, I've tried to treat it well. I tried to, I tried to downgrade its drivers. Most people try and upgrade drivers for their hardware, but... This particular one likes to go down a version, and it seems to have done a treat, but we'll wait and see. So, anyway, that's this that's that over. Just so we know, it. and it will be the same for all future podcasts because I'm not going to get rid of this one. This is it, and the audio issues will be part of this. Understood. Cue the music. Welcome to episode one of the Just Swim cast, a podcast entirely devoted to furthering the development of our species through talk and discussion. My name's Tim. My it's name's Woody. Jan- yep, it's the 10th of January, the year 2021. This is day 10 of the second UK COVID lockdown, or could be second, the third. It's third. Yeah, okay, I'm losing count now. And, uh, my fellow co-host Woody, how is it going? It's going all right. Um, hopefully, the the, the pre-stream. Um, if people listen to the pre-stream, they would have a bit of sympathy for what my computer will go through throughout the course of this. Um, but I do hope that you have some topics that we can talk about and overcome any obstacles that that are thrown at us. I do. I have a list of things. Um, but the first question is, what have you been doing to keep busy? This year or? Throughout all of it. So actually, no, let's set the scene. What is what is the UK lockdown? Why is it 2021 and we're still in lockdown? So we're going to try and theorise about what happened. Well, not only to theorise, it actually did happen. So, you know, we... So there's a lot of things that I'd like to talk about on this because I... Everyone is probably in the same mindset that we've done a pretty bad job of of dealing with this. Regardless of whatever conspiracies some people may have, and I'm sh- um, of course I'm sure you'll have some some ideas about where this virus came from, and that'll be interesting to talk about. But you look at Asia. Um, not not just China, but Southeast Asia, Thailand, Vietnam, Cambodia, um, then Australasia, New Zealand in particular. They they have done an okay job at 
in some cases, an outstanding job of dealing with this coronavirus um, pandemic. New Zealand, they don't have any cases. They, they went, right, it's pure lockdown. We're going to, no one's going to come in. No one's going to go out. Don't go out your house. Blah, de blah. Um, Asia, have, like Southeast Asia, Philippines, Singapore, although the Philippines has, is the worst hit out of the Southeast Asian area, they have a huge number of com uh, population compared to the UK. But they, they don't. But they barely have any cases, any active cases. Um, compared to the UK, we have what sixty-seven million people, and nearly I think it's nearly two million cases, uh, like cumulative, maybe, or is it maybe that's I active think, cases? I think, I think it's between one and fifty and one and thirty people I've seen in different areas of uh, the news. Yeah. Um, so I, I just think it's been a just a, a poor job by the. Uh, I, I think we we may be a more difficult culture to. Uh, We're all crammed in on top of each other, but then again, so is so, Asia. So is so, Asia. Yeah, Asia's probably yeah. even worse than this. Yeah, that's true. Um, I th I think the issue is is, I think part of the reason is our culture. We don't. You know, we don't really like being oppressed that much. We're not I think too. Humidity is humidity is bad for the virus as well. I think I saw that in realms of the news, and that's one of the things we should talk about. It's how vague everything is. It's like this ominous, like black smoke figure that you can never see. Coronavirus that might be going into your nose right now whilst you're walking down the, uh, you know, down the shopping centre aisle or wherever it is that you are getting into a lift and another thing i thought about earlier when i was on my walk is um that everyone has their own relationship with coronavirus so the person that doesn't wear a mask and and winds everyone up um or to the person who's not stepping outside or just um you know it's it's weird how it's hit everyone in such a different way that's very true um, so December last year, so um, I think that's like what twenty five months of this now. Because I remember first going into I remember towards December the end two of, years ago, twenty nine yeah, December twenty nineteen. Yeah. Yeah. So twenty nineteen December, or even I think it was more like November for for Wuhan. Yeah, that was when we were going to London on the train and everyone was like a bit antsy and you'd see like four or five people wearing masks all of a sudden and then day in, day out, it would become this thing where I'd say to my company at work, um, so when are we going to stop doing this? Yeah. Uh, it's a bit weird now. And they'd say, well, yeah, we're just sticking to the company guidelines. And they, they weren't so much, it wasn't that they didn't want to go home, it was just like, they didn't know how bad it was or that it was going to get bad. No yeah. one really did. Yeah. And then as soon as the government guidelines changed, they were like, yeah, we'll get rid of the office. And it was great. So they've done great. But the weird thing was the transition from like everyone going on the train. And I still see people going down to Brentwood station now in the morning, um, which confuses me, you know, what job, what job Monday to Friday? I mean, maybe they're just all doctors and nurses running off to save the world. Um, but I do wonder, like, Jesus, you'd have to do a lot to get me on a train these sort of days. That's a good point. So, I don't know. Day 20, uh, sorry, day 10 of the, the third lockdown. And I'm pretty much going insane. I've been going for walks. Um, I can't play golf. Golf's been taken away from us. And uh, you're stuck in your shed. Which I don't mind, actually. Um, it's quite a nice area. The problem is, is the temperature in the UK has dropped massively over the last week. Um, and I've, I've got like t two tiny heaters, which work wonders, actually. I've got one on permanently, basically. It's currently 21 
degrees Celsius. Uh, we don't do with any of that Fahrenheit stuff. And um, it's telling me that it's a comfortable humidity, uh, meaning that it's 45%. But it's quite nice down here. I haven't been doing that much, to be honest. And it's made me feel quite guilty about it. I don't even go for a walk. <laughs> but I know you don't. The, but the, so here's the question. So quickly, to the people who don't know, how long have you been building this shed for? And it's in a garden. He doesn't have a shed in the middle of nowhere. You need to set the scene for what? What, what do you mean by a shed right now? So we've the house that I'm that I'm in, which is my dad's house, um, has a, a fairly like you know it's a big garden. Um, a lot of properties these days, like n new builds, in the UK and out of the UK. Um, don't have big gardens. They don't have big gardens. Like this is a fairly big garden. This is a what, ninety foot, a hundred foot garden, something like that. Um, and right at the end of the garden is, well, for many years it was just a slab of concrete. So we started building the shed. Me and my dad. It's a joint venture. How long ago? Two, three years ago? More, more than that. I think... Um, Towards the end of E-Move it started, didn't it? Uh, Not that no. Not E-Move is the time frame. That was a previous job that we both worked in. Um, but yeah. No, I think it was more like 20... Either late 20... It was in the summer of maybe 2015 or 2016. More like 2016, I think. Let me just think. It could it could have been 2015 or even 2014. But it doesn't... How old would I have been 2014? 2014. No, that was the... <laughs> 2014, wasn't that the Athens Olympics? That was the start no. of university for me. No, 2012 was the London Olympics. Two yeah, but that was the start of university for me. was the Athens Olympics. How did I get there? No, I have no um, idea. Yeah. <laughs> 2012 was the London Olympics, two years after that. Um, yeah, that's when I started uni. I think yeah, we did. round about we then we started making music a year after that. We started making music a year after that down at the studio. Yeah, at which point you had no idea of building a shed. So it's about 2016, I think. 2000, anyway, summer of 2016, spring summer of 2016. Sometime in your life. Some point in the past, me and my dad started building this shed. It's a decent sized shed, you know, it's 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 fully built now. I think one day people will see it. But yeah, one on. day, yeah, hopefully, if we're not in lockdown forever. So, 21 square meter um, floor space, roughly. Um, but it's a bit of a funny angle. Hopefully, I'll be able to, maybe I'll take some pictures and if we do a video of this, it will, uh, I'll be able to show people. It's a bit of a mess in here, but uh, that's just because it's being built. That's, so, that's what I mean. The walls look awful. It's all a bit um, slapdash together. But it works quite well. Nice big double doors, meaning that it, when it does get cold, it is bloody cold down here. No windows. No windows. So I don't know what time it is. You know, if I didn't have my computer or my phone in here. Wooden floors, no rug. Wooden floors, no rug. Slippers um, on. Slippers on. Uh, donated slippers at that. Um, yep. And a leather sofa which of course gets extremely cold because it's leather um it's not an ideal setup to how put much it, of this Frank. shed when you were first thinking of like doing it because so you had questions about if you were going to be moving into the shed and by moving in i mean spending your time at the computer in the shed rather than in the box room in your house and having the computer up there but when you first thought about doing the shed because i know we'd always talked about the shed but I don't know how much of it was, this is a shed where we're going to make music or this is a shed where we're going to get a band and jam or this is a shed where I'm going to put my computer and whatever. I, I don't, what was your intended purpose? Because I know I had my like side along, oh, we'll be able to do this sort of thing. But what was, um, what was yours? I guess I need to provide some context. Um, me and my brother and Tim 
are what we would call pre-amateur musicians. We oh. like we like to dabble. We like to dabble, dabble in. Off-season. We have seasons of experimentation. Yeah, we have. Yeah, that's a good. That's a better way to put it. Seasons of experimentation. Never managed it. All three of us, though. And I actually, I pro- we probably have. We probably had a few jams at yours together, us three. Actually, not... no. Do you know what? Do you know what? I've got the best memory of. Sorry, we're going. We're going where we get you going. But um, yeah, there was one time when we were in Ollie, your brother's. So, oh, there's so much context. Your Woody Briggs brother's called Briggsy, but his name's actually Ollie. Um, so we were in Briggsy's room, which is your brother Ollie, and we were playing guitars, singing, and all that stuff. I think we had Joe Pratton around as well. And I think he was on the bongos, and I feel like you joined in at some point. But there was a really, really good like, you know, when you're suddenly just in the moment, like yeah, and it connects. Yeah, yeah. We had one of those. They're only rare. Anyway, sorry, connect back to where you were. Anyway, so we all like to pl- like play around with music. Um, we're all we can all play multiple instruments, I would say. Um, and. The issue was that the house was just too small to be comfortable playing music because it's not a big house that we have. I had a small studio. It was, what, probably two meters by two meters. And bear, like, bear in mind that I've got you know a computer desk, keyboards, Amps. That, was, that box room was horrendous. It was a horrendous setup, wasn't it? Yeah, I used to sit with my legs on a on the chair where my feet were, like I was hunched, like squatting on the chair, yeah. or I'd have my legs like flying up in the air over the top of the computer <laughs> screen or something. Like it was, it was small. But we did produce some decent music um, in that box room. So anyway, the, the dream was um, to have a place that's big enough to be comfortable you know having people around playing music potentially recording music um and to chill out afterwards and it be far and like be it the building be far enough away so that you can kind of crank up the the decibels and uh, not not worry about disturbing people around the neighborhood um i've not actually tested it how loud i can go but i do sometimes play music quite loud and i haven't had any complaints yet it could be really loud but i don't think you ever will you are like in terms of the garden layout you are in the middle of no one's area yeah you could possibly be walking through the alleyway two houses up and think to yourself oh that's annoying i don't even think you you, you but the people that walk down the alleyway are annoying anyway so they got their headphones on as well. So exactly. Uh, so that's the context of the shed. Um, and I didn't actually know that. I didn't know why you, because I remember why we would do it. Well, I remember why we talked about it and the fact that you'd laid a foundation, but progress had stopped. And then one day on Instagram, I saw you post a picture of maybe the bricks going or something. The first picture you posted, and I, I seem to think you were still at Emu then. I don't know why I do. Yeah, that, we've I been building like it for a long time. Because it, it rem- I remember to me, it was a point at where I hadn't been speaking to you as much as I normally did. And looking back, I think it was probably because you were at Emu, and that was like a sour spot for me. So I just kind of like... And then I saw that picture of, of the shed, and I was like, hmm, something yeah. going on there. Little did I know that it would be two, three years later until I'd actually see the full fruition of the shed. Um, more like so four. what happened what was the main yeah what happened well, obviously I think momentum died on the shed regardless of, of what happened next so um, what happened next there's well there's yeah there's a lot of, a, few, a lot of things happened um, momentum generally died because Well, where did we get up to before I left? You had the foundations. We had, had the, the foundations. Foundation. We had the brickwork. We actually no, no, 
don't think you did have the brick work. I think you just had the slabs. Oh yeah, we had slabs for quite a while, and then yeah. I got then I like you know I finished university, and in twenty seventeen, and I got a job in twenty seventeen as well. At eMove with you, you got me that job. That's when progress started to. Well, at, that summer we put we managed to get all of the walls up. I think. And I think we even got the roof up. Um, what was that 2018? Could have been 2018. Anyway, 2019. It was a finished building in 2019. It just wasn't finished. Yeah, you wouldn't want to spend time in there. Yeah, it was like Nothing there was no insulation floor. inside, no floor. It was just a concrete floor. Don't need wide up. We hadn't, yeah, we hadn't, ah, oh, that was, that was a big st- uh, road blocker, the electrical, running the electrical cable. We just never got round to it. Um, only when I got back from my, uh, uh, from my work in Dubai, did I, did, did we bother to get somebody in to lay the cable? But momentum you really picked there. up. You got there. So, Dubai, so, how long? A year? Year's one year, one year and two days. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was a good experience. I would, if anyone gets the opportunity to go to Dubai, I know I'm not selling it that well here, but it definitely is a good experience. Just try not to work for a a corporate. It's the only real way to make money out there, but it's yeah. it's a different That'll culture. Yeah, well, that'll be an estate agent, and I, I would. They're probably not making money. Um, yeah. And if you want to eat 20 chicken nuggets a day. If you want then... to order, yeah, I mean, I didn't cook. I was there for a year. Oh, I cooked. You cooked pasta at some point, didn't you? I cooked pasta, and I cooked. Did you boil it with the kettle? How did you boil it? Boil it with the kettle? No, 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 I didn't. I never oh, cooked wait. pasta. I bought pasta. Yeah, that was it. You I made huevos like rancheros once. Oh, and that must have been Ivan inspired from some Mexican food dinner you've had. No, my brother taught me that one. Oh, okay. But it is a Mexican dish, yeah. Um, Did you ever have Mexican food with Ivan? Well, Ivan's not Mexican, he's Colombian. Oh, gosh. Yeah. yeah. I've seen him eating such nice food, and I've just assumed he's Mexican. It, it's it's a fairly <laughs> similar bad? culture. Do they, do, they, do they hate each other? I don't even know. They do hate each other, but it's fair. Oh, it's a fairly we... similar culture, like chuck culture to us. Uh, we'll to, move on. Like, we'll move us, on swiftly. It's, so, it's, it's Spanish, like you know that whole a lot of that area of America is like ex-Spanish Empire, right? So you know. So let me off. I don't think anyone's letting you off the hook. I think it's that was pretty racist, but um, we'll skip over that. <laughs> what did you learn from going to Dubai? Don't work for a corporate business if you're somebody like me, because you can't get anything done. You you can't get something you. I guess my problem, I guess it's not corporate that's the problem. It's, I was raised in my career in startup culture. You know, if you can do something, get it done. Like, do it. Like, you don't need somebody's permission to do it. Just tell somebody, look, I'm going to do this. And they go, yes, do it. Do it now. Um, and you just do it. In in corporate world, you know... It's you, a conveyor belt of ideas. It's a, it's a conveyor belt of ideas that you have to filter down. There's a very clear hierarchy, regardless of how they like to sell themselves to the outside world. You know, corporates like to pretend that they're a startup on the inside, but really they're yeah. not. Um, there's still a very clear hierarchy. 
Yeah. And, and then this, the idea of being a startup becomes the excuse for why any employee doesn't feel like things are fair. Precisely. So like you're not working hard enough or Precisely. this doesn't make sense what we're doing. Well, we're doing it because we're a startup. That's what we have to do. Precisely. Rather than it being a startup and like yeah, actually being like, a, as you said previously, an adventure of, uh, you know, discovery and just get things done. Yeah. So that's, that's what I learned um, that I'm not designed for corporate. Um, I did learn a lot of other things. Of course, I learned a lot more about the industry that I'm in. I learned a lot more about how to manage people, uh, not necessarily manage because I'm a manager, but just cope. I guess cope with people is the right way to say it. Um, you, uh, you learned about living alone and you found a girlfriend. That's true. I learned about living alone and finding what's what I would call the love of my life. There we go. And I still remember the first day. So we used to uh, do video calls a lot whilst he was out there. And um, yeah, I remember you messaging me saying you're going on a date with a uh, little Liza. I remember sending uh, pictures of her to you. Where did you go? You went for a meal. Well, it was um, it's quite Did a nerve-wracking experience. Um, go through it. Go through meeting. Wait, wait. wait. So oh, you were God. going. Did, oh, wait, ha did you talk a lot before? Was there a lot of texting, or was it just yeah? Like, there was, oh, a, let's there was there's a fair amount of texting. Yeah. All oh, right. Okay. Because I remember when I was young, if you text someone too much first, when you meet them. It would almost be awkward because, like, you've had that, like, oh, it's interesting getting to know a new person buzz. But, um... Well, we were kind of lucky because we, um, we were both kind of new to Dubai. To Dubai, so we were kind of not only getting to know each other. You're having a honeymoon hype in your life. No, no, I wouldn't... no, it's not that. That's not the point I'm trying to get at. This was before we met. There was there was lots going on, lots of stuff happening. So we weren't we were both working. There wasn't there was probably a couple of hours in the evening where we could really talk synchronously and throughout the day it was very asynchronously. So no. send send a message in yeah. the morning and get a that's reply in the evening. So many yeah, exactly, and that's a good thing. You fall into the communication bubble and it's like GG. Yeah. You know everything about each other after a week. Exactly. So the first date we met at um a like an American style smokehouse. Okay, in... so stop that. Stop there. So you American style smokehouse. Who was who was in there first? Who who got there first? Well it's it's a I don't know, because I need to explain what had happened here. All right, okay. Fine, fine, fine. Um, so I got to Dubai, and I had a bit of a nightmare with my, uh, like, not visa. You get the visa before you go, but they need to, like, do... Um, blood tests and get you a resident card Emirates ID it's called an Emirates ID it's basically like a national ID but for residents and mine took a very long time to process because I didn't have a phone number a local phone number and I couldn't get a local phone number for about a month because they were processing my visa and they required to, to have my passport. And at the same time, if I wanted to go get a SIM card, they required me because I'm not a, a local. Even if you're a local, you need to provide your Emirates ID. You need to, if you don't have an Emirates ID, you need to give them your passport. So basically in Dubai, your SIM card is linked to your identity. I think it's the same here, actually. I think if you sign up to... Um, a contract you need to provide your ID but here in the UK and other places in the world you can just go get a pay only sim 
like pay as you go sim and just stick it in your phone and it's got credit on it they don't have those in dubai if you want to get a sim card you need to give them your identity and then they record it on uh, the system whatever system that is um so i didn't have a phone well i did i had my uk phone uh but it cost a fortune for data so for the first month i was uh i don't know what the word is but it's like i was a, a wi-fi hunter in limbo land yeah i was you know everywhere i was going i was just trying to find the wi-fi, wi-fi. wi-fi. <laughs> yeah um and you know they all all those wi-fi wi-fi uh connections they uh you sign it says tap here to sign in or whatever and it brings up a little u- user interface and you have to type in your email address so basically in dubai most of the my phone has remembered all of the like if i go back now i would have wi-fi everywhere everywhere i go and it's all registered under a at b.com so you've been fighting your way through dubai trying to find wi-fi wi-fi spots to fight for this tinder match that you uh it wasn't tinder it Um, wasn't no a comparison and regardless the we got there i couldn't find wi-fi for ages right i eventually found wi-fi and either her phone wasn't on or she didn't have her wi-fi on or she didn't have any data so wait wait wait. so you're meeting at x time and you got there on time no there was no time there was no time it was just we're going Meet to at this place. we're going to pmb okay she said i'll be there in a half an hour and then there was radio silence so I was like, cool. I went there, yeah. got a taxi there. Um, there's two entrances to this place. There's, it's like a two-story restaurant-style bar slash smokehouse sort of thing. And I waited upstairs, and I tried to find Wi-Fi and like message her and say, like, I'm here. I'm at the, the entrance. I didn't know there were two entrances at the time. So I was waiting up there for quite some time. Eventually, I got a message back. I must have been waiting there for like half an hour or so. Half an hour to an hour. But wait, this is a restaurant. Or did you did you say you were going to meet at it's the not, mall? It's not a, a restaurant. Is? It's not a restaurant. It's a, it's a bar, basically. A big, big, big bar? No, it wasn't a big bar. <laughs> But didn't you, wouldn't you just be like looking around? Just like, uh... I was expecting to meet her outside and go in. I didn't know All if right. we were going to like, oh, eat. The whole, time, the whole time you sat there nervous. Ooh. Yeah, exactly. Oh, anyway, so I eventually got a message through saying, uh, yeah, I'm downstairs with my friends. Oh, dear. <laughs> so, what like, a challenge. What a challenge, no, no right? Way. You've got the first hurdle, yeah. Protection. Yeah, exactly. And I, I like that. This is <laughs> not like, only have you got to make the effort to like put yourself out there for one person. I, you've been exactly. thrown in the deep end. Yeah, there exactly. That's a good job, though. That's a good. Uh, that's a good filtering system. Yeah, I'm I agree. Liable, I agree. Yeah. Uh, we spoke about it. we spoke about it quite a bit afterwards, and um, I'm glad you did it. Anyway, so I went down there, boy. Here's the interesting thing. My name's Woody. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, yeah, that's what I did. I went went round, and the the bar counter is quite tall, and and she's quite um she's quite petite. Uh, so I couldn't really see her when I walked down. Um, so I was walking down the stairs, and as you're walking down the stairs, you can kind of see the whole bar, like from a bird's eye view, basically. Um, and I spotted a load of young people, kind of my age, and I couldn't see any other young people there, like as young as we were. Um, so I thought, she, well, I can't see her. She must be over there somewhere. 
so I thought to myself, what I'll do is I'll walk round the bar where they're all standing and see if I can spot her. If I can't spot her, I will walk, carry on walking around the bar and walk out. <laughs> anyway, so I walked around the bar um, and uh, I spotted her. I introduced myself. Um, she turned around. She looked at me. She looked up at me. And the first thing she did was turn around really fast, like turn, like face her back to me really fast. And then like, saw her, like, I don't know, it looked like she took a breath or something. Um, and then she turned around with a, what looked like a real smile, but you know, she was putting it on. Now, on, shat, her, shat herself as well in the moment. Right. Now I was dressed um, fairly formally. She, that's the thing. She doesn't know with, that you'd be shitting it either because you, like, you don't know enough about exactly. each other. Exactly. Well, that was the beautiful yeah. thing. But I was yeah. dressed quite formally because I would just uh, come from work. Yeah. Um, so I had like a pink, not pink, but like... Um, pink shirt it wasn't a pink shirt it was sounds like a pink shirt it was a pink shirt but it was wasn't pink <laughs> pink it wasn't bright pink it was like pastel pink yeah pale pink essex boy pink shirt it no was, not yeah. that pink okay um wallpaper i wish pink. yeah wallpaper god do you remember that anyway carry on um there's a wallpaper pink i was wearing black sort of skinny jeans and like brown brown shoes but like proper shoes it's quite formally dressed like ca for casual formal formally casual and she was wearing uh, i think she was wearing white converses she had sort of straight cut um jeans like trendy sort of jeans and um makeup and sort of a, a jacket so like casual street hip yeah, sort of street. So anyway, she had about four friends around her. Did they all look like they were speaking English, or they were got, um, they were from all over the place, but most of them were European. Mm. Uh, so they hated me straight from the start, obviously. <laughs> and and well, the I worst, don't know. you don't, you don't look English. Though. If you approach me, I wouldn't be like. I, I don't know if, if I knew you, I wouldn't be like. Well, they, this they heard me. They heard me that I'm English. <laughs> hey, my name's Woody. <laughs> <laughs> right. Edward Briggs, Lord Edward of Wintingdale. <laughs> um, but the worst thing is, so, like, you know, it's already quite a stressful experience. Like, I'm meeting this person, that's already in, like a lot for me, meeting somebody new. You should have taken her out of the equation. You should have just gone, do you want to go and, like, I don't know. That's just Well, weird. let me anyway. get through it. Let me yeah, get yeah, through yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Then she said that she's got, like, her friends there. I know. And the, the, <laughs> on top of that, she didn't even tell her friends that I was meeting her. Oh, there you go. So she's savage. <laughs> right? So anyway, yeah, I started just, talking. Approach me. <laughs> yeah, I started talking to her. Um, you're lucky. Your time slot. You, there could have been another one rolling up in half an hour. It, it could have been. It could have been. <laughs> anyway, um, there was a few more friends that came over, and yeah. this this girl um, came over to Liza and said, um, "Are you okay? Is this guy bothering you?" Um, and like I was like, "Shit!" Like. Am I giving that am I much of? Am I am I bothering her? Yeah, am I? Yeah, is that, yeah. Yeah, really maybe I am. Yeah, <laughs> I'm a botherer. Yeah, I'm flown to this country. It's the first girl I've met, and I'm bothering her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, anyway, so we settled down a little bit. One of the guys that was her friends. Um, you drinking? Oh, absolutely. What, can't just be it. Can't not can't can't be going through that without a Peroni in hand. Oh, I can't. I could. I, do you know what? I wouldn't have had a Peroni just because I can imagine you picking up the glass, holding it constantly, the top, and your hand just like wobbling. Oh, constantly, <laughs> and it was you know the beer was warming up because my hands were on it, 
I was taking <laughs> sips every two seconds, just trying to get through oh, this beer yeah. and get through yeah. this situation. Um, oh god! Anyway, this young this young guy was nice. Good point. No, but pause a sec to get up to this point. Though strong performance. Like, uh, uh, strong. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but yeah, go. Um, it was definitely uh, an emotional roller coaster inside. I had a brave yeah. face on, but geez, I I don't know if um I had to I had to get out. I had to go. Anyway, so we were talking. I was talking to a friend. Um, his name has has slipped my mind at the moment, but um, it will come back to me at some point. He was Colombian as well, so we had a little good chat about uh, Colombia, and Liza could kind of tell that I was not a rapist. Not, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, she could tell that I wasn't completely comfortable. So she said, do you want to go and sit over there so that we can talk, you know, without all these people around us? I think that was the first test, basically. Like, can I talk, can I, can I talk to other people without being weird? Yeah. Um, so I passed it the first the, test. The sink or swim test. The sink, exactly. Um, At the moment, you're like treading water, like, and she's just like throwing you a freaking rubber ring. Yeah, she threw me a rubber ring. Um, so we went and sat down at this table and we started talking. Uh, well, she started talking. I still was like filled to the brim with fear that, that one of them would come over and and um, start talking to me and I wouldn't know what to say. Uh, for the people that I mean, a lot of people won't don't know me. Like Tim, you know me, but a lot of people don't. I, I'm quite introverted to to, to strangers um, and new surroundings. I, I don't really like people, uh, so it's quite difficult for me. So I wasn't really talking much, and to be honest with you. I couldn't really concentrate on what she was saying because it was quite a loud uh, smokehouse. There were quite a lot of drunk people there and I was constantly in the back of my mind thinking one of her friends is going to come over and I'm going to have to concentrate on what they're saying. And it, like, I was getting a bit overwhelmed. That's hilarious. So th before thinking about the primary situation, you're already focused on the on the the more daunting aspect of one of their friends coming over and simply talking. Exactly. That, that's what went through my mind. Anyway, so I, I convinced her that I need to move further out of the bar. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just, sorry, to, just to, in case you were... Uh, I mean, I do like your friends, but I'd like to move a bit further away. <laughs> no, Maybe to a different location. <laughs> no, well, that would have been ideal, but I didn't want to take away... I'd, she was obviously in her comfort zone around her friends, and I didn't want to... Um, didn't want to take her away from that comfort zone. So anyway, so we moved outside. It was quite a nice setting. It's, I mean, it's, um, if anyone's been, it was Jamira, Jamira yeah, Madinat. Sat on the, like the marina, like the pictures that you've sent me of the water it's, boats and yeah, that's it. It's and... there's like um, it's like if if you can imagine like a an Arabian castle surrounded by a moat and in the moat are boats and if you want to get to the, another part of the castle inside the car it's a souk it's, it's called a souk it's basically like a, a very short small shopping mall um it's beautiful in there and there's really like lots of nice places to eat in there few places to drink in there it's part of uh, Jamiro's hotel and you know it's it's Dubai so it, like everything is like lit up and and comforting and warm and things like that so we moved outside where there were some tables as part of this bar and I was much more comfortable there but it was roasting hot and I had these skinny jeans on so now I was like slightly s sweating um 
and and that was it and we started talking a bit more i was a, got a bit more comfortable out there um we started talking a lot sounds like she knew how to get the best out of you yeah um and that was it there you are uh i took her we i think we we stayed quite late i think um and it was a work night for me i believe i think i must have stayed i think we left around 2 a.m when the we we, we left when the bar closed which was around 2 a.m at the time um this was pre-covid and uh, i she lived just around the corner so i took us to the cab spot and we got in a cab dropped her back or did she go with her friends I'm going to have to cut that bit because I really don't know what happened I can't really remember I think I might have had just enough to drink but I can't really remember how I got home <laughs> no that's perfect so um, one of the things that's interesting is there's a lot of things changing in society at the moment, which is about gender and sexuality and all of these things and what it is to be a girl. And um, I think I think even though it is discussed what it is to be a boy or a guy, it isn't as often discussed the fact that a lot of men aren't action men. And what I mean by that is that... Um, men like a lot of them i actually think a lot of the men that i meet are introverted and that they have this mask that they wear to survive life as a man that they are not in fact introverted or that they are not because they it's it's sort of seen as like a weak quality in a way some people do and i think that a lot of girls are expecting someone to take them on a date and like to be flamboyant and be you know, Jack the Lad and, and and just drive everything. But I think actually girls would be a lot happier if they didn't look for that because, as I say, I think about 60 or 70% of men are probably not that person. And I think there you give a beautiful insight into what it is for not an action man guy, but Woody Briggs, the introvert who likes to keep to himself and make music but has quirky qualities and all these amazing things actually like even when i was thinking of you walking down the stairs it was like a presentation like a moment in your life where you're like i'm going for it i'm <laughs> yeah. doing it <laughs> like descending into chaos from your life that is normally completely organized and and, and kept that's absolutely from anything anything challenging to keep it at arm's length that's absolutely um, it which is it's even interesting that you had to descend into the situation um so why don't you talk about what's going on now? So you, now, because of coronavirus, you ended up leaving Dubai, not because of coronavirus, but because work came to an end. And then she had already gone to Philippines. She had left for the Philippines um, at the end of... Because she is Filipino. 2019. She was there on a... Uh, like a postgraduate... Not postgraduate scheme, like a graduate scheme. And she flew back to the Philippines. They offered her a job to come back. Um, which she was really keen to take. But then uh, COVID happened. So uh, I flew out to the Philippines on the... I think my flight was on the 13th or 14th of, I think it was the 14th, I think I landed on the 14th of February, Valentine's Day, um, to see her again, and we had a good four days, it's an eight hour flight from Dubai to the Philippines, nine hours on the way back, um, we had a good time for four days, uh, I flew back to Dubai to carry on working and 
that's when March happened, March 2019, and everything just went in complete lockdown. Everywhere, the whole world just went into lockdown. Um, March when, sorry, 2019? March 2019. And... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. This is the eleventh month. The eleventh month. So whilst I was out there, um, we were... I asked if she would kindly be my partner in crime, my girlfriend. Which is an interesting thing, because that's like a, a mystical question of nothingness when you already, that's what, so I'd always say when I was growing up, like, oh, to my mum, like, I'd say I'm, I'm seeing someone at the moment, like, I might be going out tonight because I'm seeing this person, yeah, and uh, she'd always say, oh, you've got a girlfriend, and I was like, oh, no, I'm just seeing this person, and she's like, yeah, like, like she's a girl, she's a girlfriend, and I was like, no, I'm just seeing them, I haven't asked them out yet, like, you ask them out because you're seeing them like you're asking to, to see them later so in the old days that's asking someone out yeah but now we have this thing of asking someone to be the girlfriend yeah it, it's a strange concept but um i do understand it's like you try the goods before it's like a a taster sample few months of you to experiment and to to say that you because in that time frame if you'd gone off with another girl Oh God, you were definitely like that's that's abysmal. So it's not like it's like this. I don't think that's true. Reason. I think I'll contest that. Maybe, well, maybe that's a thing then. But I'd always thought that it was a. Uh, so did I. But I. I mean, I don't think that's the case anymore. I think media is changing it, isn't it? I hundred percent agree. Like, it's like the market is this vicious, savage, like black market, and everyone's up for grabs until they are absolutely taken off the shelves. Exactly. And then locked away in a cupboard. It's like, that's mine. Yeah. <laughs> now, interestingly, we weren't like that. Um, at, when we were together in Dubai, it was very, it, it was an, an exclusive re relationship. You know, like I, I just wanted to spend my time with her and she just wanted to spend her time with me. Unless we with we were with our friends, like yeah. I was with my friends from work, or she was from with her friends from the graduate scheme. Um, t towards the end of twenty nineteen, that all became one and the same thing. You know, like I would go out with her, and her friends would be there to have a chat, have some beers, have some shisha, whatever. Um, but it was an exclusive thing, and I think that's the th that's the point. Going back to what you were saying, um, this idea of asking somebody to be their girlfriend is important for some people um, because without without that question and without that response, it's you're right that it's not exclusive yet. You're you're balancing on a knife edge. You're like. It's not that you're, I don't, yeah. I guess, I guess, you just want to know where things are, maybe. I don't know. I think it's just that there's... Maybe it's maybe it's a good modern invention. I've always looked on it and laughed and thought, yeah, you're right, Mum, it is silly. But now I think about it, maybe it's good that people have... Uh, I mean, in the old days, you'd just probably get put with someone and told you're going to marry them. And then you're like, yeah, okay. They're really old days. Yeah. So, I mean, things have changed. So, I think... This was a whole tangent on what I'm doing now in COVID-19, I believe. Yeah, yeah. Um, that was all context, really. So you're sat in a shed. I'm sat in a shed. FaceTime and the, the girl in, well, you, you, lives are in the Philippines, the girl. Yeah, FaceTiming my, my girlfriend in the Philippines. And... Planning of your next adventures once COVID sets us free. Exactly. Planning our next is, adventures, which is quite difficult to do because obviously like... It's going to be like July, earliest, August. I actually think... I, I, I wouldn't I, be surprised if we're talking well, about this I try in not November. To, I try not to... Well, I, I hope that's not the case. I really try not to think about it too much. No, no. I, oh, yeah. I think you'll be able to... 
Oh, I don't know, mate. Oh, yeah, February. That's like, you know, maybe it, I take it, we're taking, to... we're taking yeah, month by month. I'm imagining in like May time, you can fly to like Germany because they allow it. And then Germany allows you to fly to, like, you have to do a trip around the world to these different places. Well, that, that might be the case, uh, which isn't necessarily a bad thing because we've always said like we would like to go traveling with each other. Yeah, that's true. Maybe you could. Maybe there's a mutual place that will both accept flights from your thingies. Have you looked at that? Uh, there's one country in the world that's um, <laughs> that's allowing tourism. And if Where anybody's in the same situation as me, because I'm sure there are, not that anyone will listen to this, um, but I'm sure there are some people out there that are in the same position as me. There's a website called travelbands.org. I'll um, get it up on my browser here. <laughs> and um oh we have a newbie we have somebody new um so the mauritius are the only country i believe that are open for tourism now there are strict entry requirements still you still need negative test results um you still need to quarantine for 14 days this website's brilliant. Um, it's really good. You can um, do email subscriptions. You can actually select your country that you want to travel to. Wait, so, so which country is this? Mauritius. 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 Why, is... are you, why are you going, mate? Have a nice holiday. Because um, you still have the quarantine. We'll have to... I, I mean, none of us, neither of us are working, so we could. Wouldn't you be quarantined anyway? Like, isn't that what you'd probably do for the first, like, seven days if you haven't seen your girlfriend for a while? True, yeah. What is this? Um, it's 15 days quarantining once you're there. 14. 14. There you go. Took two months. <laughs> two months in the Mauritius, yeah. Could yeah, do. I, we could do. What I hear is quite nice. Let me get some pictures up. It is quite nice. It's, a, again, a ex Spanish colonized or Portuguese maybe I think it might be Portuguese I don't know why I'm going on maps to see pictures that's not very creative let me have a look at some Google oh bloody hell mate <laughs> have you seen this I'm I need to stop talking in case Liza listens to this she's going to be like when the fuck are we going to Mauritius <laughs> this looks like the nuts we'll just get one of these shacks out in the ocean and just uh, hobby up in that for 14 days Would be nice, wouldn't it? Yeah. Anyway. Well, that's a good website. I will uh, keep that in mind should my life ever go towards a place where I will need travel. I don't think it will because my life is, as always, the complete polar opposite of yours. Um, I won't be traveling for a long, long time. Yeah. Um... But um, I don't know. I hope you guys find a way out soon. I'm sure we will. Uh, and that's what I'm up to. Just checking that website basically every well, every day, really. Um, just waiting to, to leave the country. It's definitely a song lyric there. Yeah, somewhere. Somewhere in there. Um, <laughs> but anyway, I've got a topic. All right, that's fine. I was about to grab one, but I think yours will be much better. Well, you've probably actually got this written down. Okay. Um, but if you do have a sequence, because maybe you've got some sort of no, idea. No, no, just, just, just go. Just go. So, it's January, what is it, the 10th at the moment, at the time of recording. Yeah. And, which means it's a new year, 2021. Now, we both have a shared New Year's resolution. Yeah, yeah, keep that on, keep that on the lowdown though. But we are, I'm still achieving it. Keep it on the lowdown. Well, I don't want to commit to it massively. I mean, I'm doing all right. Okay. <laughs> okay, we'll leave it at that then. Are you still doing? Are you still doing good? I'm, I'm doing brilliantly. Obviously, you're not. You've. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think well I'm doing good in in some regards but I've I've lapsed in others. Okay. So, I think I need I don't to, know if I can do it on my own, man. 
Oh, it's horrendous, isn't it? If it's you've fucking given up, horrendous. Then... Well, that's the problem. <laughs> I haven't. <laughs> oh. Anyway, we'll talk about that. Um, well, maybe if you are listening, anyone, you can guess in the comments. Yeah. Um, in the comments of wherever we hide this on the interwebs. Anyway, let's, let's let's move on from that one then. Uh, All right. I so, thought that'd be an interesting one, but obviously it didn't go as planned. Next. Well, topic. it's interesting. All right. Okay. No, it's uh, fine. No, it's fine because we don't want to commit to. Uh, don't want to commit to. Um, let's see how we're doing. In, let's see how we're doing on podcast four, and then we might talk about that. Okay. Otherwise, we're just going to spend the rest of the podcast just remembering that that New Year's resolution. Okay. But I did do yoga for the first three days of New Year. How was that? The first three days. Uh, that was that was actually that was quite eye opening. Um, it made me feel a bit more relaxed, a bit more chill. But then I've got to this point now where we've taken my daughter out of nursery um she's four years old and my partner as you know is uh well she's pregnant early days and we're both working from home five days a week and it's just like the weekend is the same as the weekday it's just an absolute mission to just get through the day and to find some element of beauty in the day even though it's amazing to spend time with your family and it's it's like sometimes just to get through the day i might walk over to my daughter and just hug her and it all feels better but there's so many times where you know she's driving me crazy or we're both driving each other crazy me and claudia or we're just like we're in a two-bedroom flat and we're on top of each other we can go for walks every so often but even that it's like how many times you're going to walk around the field outside and, and, uh, especially like I took, <laughs> I took Miyako for a walk earlier. Yeah. And, uh, there was this huge, um, one of those dogs that like eats children. Yeah. And, uh, so I said, Miyako, hold my hand. And, uh, cause there's a dog coming up here. And, uh, normally she's like, yeah, yeah it's all fine. And then she, um, she just didn't, she's like, no. And I was like, I've, this is like, 30 seconds into the walk, like the air's filling my lungs, nice and cold. I'm like, wow, here we go. Fresh air, escaping this lockdown, being in a flat. And she was like, no. And I was like, all right, okay. So then you go into your parent tactics mode and you're like, okay, how can I work some leverage here? Like, do I have anything she wants? No. Okay. Can I ask it differently? So I'm sort of doing all these tactics, uh, just hold my hand basically. And then I was like, right, I'm going to have to pick you up. So I went to pick her up. And she started like sort of running off into the field, like in the direction towards the dog. And I was like, oh dear. Um, But the dog owner kind of knows about me and her because we've seen the dog and him before and commented on how he's like a bit of a beast, like in a nice way, because he's the dog owner's not an idiot, but he knows that the dog's a beast. Um, But that was like, so that was like the 30 minutes of escape that, me and Claudia had today and it's like it was panicking about a dog eating yeah, your child yeah exactly <laughs> you know what I mean I was like fuck me well just give me a break um but yeah so yoga was intended to be that break and for three days it was I do this thing which is half an hour with Jen I think it's called or something or jazz I don't even know what her name is on YouTube um and I tried to get Miyako and Claudia to do it and uh like not that they have to commit to it, it's my thing and it's just oh after like 20 minutes on the third day, probably 10 minutes, I'm so long that like the simple thing of like balancing your leg out and there's like this graceful girl, like a ballerina, like da 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 da, like spreading her leg back behind her and her arm out in front. And there's me like wobbling like a giraffe. Yeah, I don't even know. Like a like baby a giraffe, giraffe. On drugs. On drugs. <laughs> and, uh, and I'm like thinking, graceful, like just relax the muscles. And then I got to the point where I just turned the TV off and I just did some stretches. And I was like, yeah, that feels good. Um, and yeah, we're on day 10 now. And it's probably, yeah, it's been about seven days since I've done it. So, so the momentum just, uh, I mean, this year I've done well. Three days of commitment to something is is quite strong. 
So it's not in my worst New Year's resolutions and uh, efforts. I will pick things back up. But it is this endless fog of being in lockdown, just like having these limitations on what you can do. Like Claudia said to me earlier, she was like, I mean, if we're just going to get coronavirus eventually, if we, you know, if, if it's something that's just going to be around, maybe we should just relax a bit more and just think, fuck it, let's go do stuff because we're so insanely bored, yeah? And we are normal people who stick to the rules, but we have now got to the point where we're like, maybe we just say, fuck it, like, let's go do something. And then I sat do. Yeah, exactly. There's nothing to do. There's nothing to look forward to. I can't, I don't have this, you know, I'm not going to the theatre in three weeks' time. I haven't got holiday in seven weeks. I haven't got golf. I haven't got, you know, it's easy to think about the things you haven't got. Um, but I just said there's nothing to do other than like the only difference we'll be making there is like signing ourselves up for possible death in a and a virus more openly than we are now by sitting at home. So I agree. It's um, yeah, it's a difficult difficult situation for me. It's been quite the opposite. It's it um, the days just keep speeding up. I mean, I do get up quite late. You you get up quite early and you message me quite early in the morning. Most of the time I look at the message and probably fall back to sleep. Wake up around I'll, nine, half past nine. I'll, um, I'll drop our lovely Miyako off at seven in the morning. And uh, at seven o'clock, I'll ask you if the days are speeding up. <laughs> <laughs> they Actually, are. to be fair, that would be a rarity for you. So it'd probably be great. You'd be like, yep. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, Claudia, are the days speeding up or are they slowing down? Speeding They're speeding up. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Everyone else is living in a fast world. Sure, I feel sure. like, um, yeah, I'm like. Time dilation. I'm like, I'm like showering for five minutes extra just to like fill out the day. Mm. <laughs> like, this is, I'm scraping the barrel. So, um, and now I've just taken to Amazon to buying like toys for Miyako, like a race car and things like that. Things that are somewhat entertaining for myself as well. So um, Amazon's going to get it hard. And that's probably what coronavirus was all made for. Well, that's, that's what I was about to say. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. mean, Amazon have done amazingly out of this. I've, I probably purchased two or three items from their website yeah. a week. When you um when it comes to the door, do you give it like a, a ten minutes grace of like let the coronavirus disappear? No. Do you wipe it or you no. just you're straight you're straight in? I open the door, I smile at the driver. Give him a kiss. Yeah, sometimes and um oh, what I like to do is um because they like to run away these days, they you know, because of coronavirus, I think they're told to Ring the doorbell. Well, put put the package on the floor, on the doorstep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ring the doorbell and, then, and run, basically. Yeah, but they, sometimes they do that, but they make a little grunt as they go around. It's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> now, does, anyway. What I like to do because obviously the app tells you like when it's coming. Like, ah, oh, this it's six stops away, um, four stops away, three stops away. Hmm. Uh, so when it gets to about one stop away, it means they're about five minutes away. Because they, you know, they need to get find the package in their van, get to my house, scan the package on their thing, tell Amazon that they've arrived. Blah de blah de blah. So it's about five minutes from the one stop thing for me. So I, what I like to do is wait at the front door and poke my eye through the little peephole, and just as they get to the door. And I can see they're about to ring the doorbell. I like to open the door really fast <laughs> and, and grab, 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 their, grab the package from their hand. And if you're lucky, if they're holding it in a um, decent way, you can sometimes get your hand to like touch on theirs. And like just do a little, <laughs> a little finger twiddle. <laughs> oh, you're the fucking reason, mate. You're spreading it. Oh. Yeah, and and, and you've got to try it. Driver. You've got to try it because uh, it's the reaction that I that I adore. <laughs> it's the uh, the, it's the hesitation <laughs> that you see <laughs> and the fear in their eyes. Some psychopathic mind fucker. 
<laughs> you're like, yeah, did you just t-? yeah, I fucking did. Yeah, mate. I did. <laughs> Looking in their eyes. <laughs> Holding up your hand, like, and, and, and they they do this thing where they um, um they like pull their hand away fast, and they, they don't want you to know that like they've pulled it away fast. Like you can see the reaction that they've pulled it away fast, but immediately he's, like, as, he's opened the door fast. He's taken the package. I've got nothing left. Yeah, like, exactly. And they, they walk off. Run they, away. I'm useless. Yeah, they've got their head down, and it's yeah, amazing. I mean, bad. I do appreciate these guys. They uh, you know, they're. They're risking quite a lot. They're going to everyone's house. Apparently, they uh, it was a big thing when I was a Domino's driver back in the day. Like, yeah, I want to be an Amazon driver. It was like that was what we looked up to because apparently they get a lot of money and they're just sitting there just driving on it. That's so. If you haven't worked as a Domino's driver, if you're a kid out there and you're growing up and your parents are telling you to get a job, be a Domino's driver. Whatever you do, don't work in Domino's as a pizza maker. Be a Domino's driver. Because you listen to music, you drive around, you earn money, you can work till late at night, so you can go out and say to your parents you, you're working when you're not and all these other things. It just it makes your life incredible. It's the best job you can ever work. For X amount of money, you get the tips. People who work in the store get paid the same as you, but they don't get the tips. They pay for your petrol, and petrol definitely costs less than what they think it does. Um, so if you ever get the chance, definitely do that. But yeah, I remember that we always... We always admired the Amazon driver because they didn't have to stack the drinks fridge. So. <laughs> um, I would like to say that that little bit about the um, how I open the door is is all it's all a lie. It's all for comedic value. I just just in case somebody attempts to report me, um, I just thought I'd add a bit of spice to this podcast. Uh, it's probably lost all of its comedic value now that I've told that it's fa- uh, fake. But, um, so that's just the kind of person that Woody is. I hope they. It I hope people had a good laugh. It lies to you. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Um, so I will now drag a question from the question bag. One sec, we've got Claudia interrupting the first ever podcast. So no, no, it's fine. It's fine. What is it? That's a dolly. Oh, there's something. So, so um, I can I can talk about that actually. Thank you. So, um, my daughter Miyako. She has been bought an Asian doll. Doll. I can't say doll. It's a doll, yeah? D-O-L-L, yeah? Okay. She's been bought an Asian doll by my mum, <coughs> who is... We're, well, I'm English. Claudia is, is Indonesian. And my mum always wants to emphasise and embellish and appreciate Miyako's Asian roots, which I think is actually a lovely thing for someone from the opposite um, heritage. To, to kind of like bend over and, and always want to make sure that that is something that is appreciated. And I'm the same as well. Um, I really want her to know her Asian roots and to, you know, just know that she's half Indonesian. Anyway, so she has this, um, I guess my mum looked at all these Barbies and stuff and was like, fuck this, like, okay, um, I'm going to get her an Asian doll. Can you hear that? It sounds like no. you're opening something. Yeah, it's all right. It's just Claudia just rustling around. Just uh... it's all right. I need to um, I need to pop one of these. Oh yeah, pop one of your uh, pop one of your New Year's resolutions. Yeah. Anyway, so she has an Asian doll that was flown flown from I think Russia or or somewhere. So to... it's a Russian doll. To America? No, it's not Russian. It was, it was a weird country flown to America, okay, and then it was flown to the UK because of COVID. It couldn't actually get to get around the world. It had to be flown like that and stored in my Canadian uncle's factory for a week or something weird. But anyway, heaven and earth has moved to get this with doll. A little doll called Dotty Asia. That's her name. All okay. right, Dotty Asia to fly around the world so dotty asia arrives okay and she's like this little uh she looks like moana is there, or something is there like a way this. i can get a picture of this is it um are they I, can, uh... um I mean you could probably you could probably google it and i could say yeah that's a dotty asia comparison um but i won't be able to see unless you screen share <clears throat> 
But it does look like a kind of a, a little Miyako and it's got a really cute Asian face and everything. Anyway, so she now sleeps with um full let me go full screen. Yeah, there we go. There's Dotty Asia. That's her. God, it's almost like they didn't make just one. Cool. So that's 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 Dotty Asia with her little slippers that fall off all the time. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Our one's in a tutu, which is weird because the tutu is like inverted. So, uh, but yeah, exactly. But this is the most like that's probably how it comes when it's bought. But now her dress is just it's above like her that. head. Oh, her, her butt is just out the whole time. And I, I tried to get Yako to sit her up, and uh, she just like puts her face down on the sofa so her butt's in the air. <laughs> that's all she does. <laughs> but, um, now that Claudia is pregnant and has a baby in her belly. Miyako, we're going in to check on her at night, and she has Dotty Asia. She stuffs it up her t-shirt and sleeps with it like this. And it's a plastic doll that's big, yeah? Mm. It's like the size of, like, I don't know. For some reason, my head's saying three sweet potatoes. Like, it's quite big, yeah? <laughs> and uh, she sleeps with it underneath her t-shirt, and I just think that's just pretty funny. But, yeah, she's doing it again for a second night. That's what Claudia said to me. Before I was about to unveil one of the magical, magical questions that I put down on the list of things to ask, which is, <clears throat> so you find a magical lamp, um, it has a genie inside when you rub it, and you have three wishes, and you can't wish for more wishes, and my question isn't really what would you ask for, it's like, I'm trying to ask you what would you ask for with three wishes? But also, I want you to really like squeeze everything out of these wishes. I want you to get, like, think that you're asking the best wishes. See, that, but here's the thing, because you know what my mind is like. And, you know, like, I have a very different mind than, than you and probably a lot of other people as well. Might, might be why I'm asking you. Well, here's the thing is. I know you'd, that you'd be like, I don't want wishes. You can fuck off with your wishes. <laughs> <laughs> not going to fucking change the world with your wishes. <laughs> <laughs> well, so here's the thing. A lot of people would um, ask for ask for things that would better themselves. Um, and I. As much as I would like to do that. For you and for me and the entire human race. This is where you're going, isn't it? You're going to save the world. Um, I don't know if that's possible to save the world with three wishes. I think you could do a lot that's of good with them, question. though. That's another question. Yeah. I think you could do a lot of good. Now you could just ask for um, just unlimited money. That's what Claudia said, but I said to her, if you've got unlimited money, then your money's worth nothing because the supply of money is now infinite. So you've got to be really careful with But exactly. Questions. That's that's exactly. And you've just used one, you've only got two left. Uh, well hold on a minute. I said no. Somebody could say. I never said I but would hold, ask for that. Yeah, but you're holding you're holding the magic lamp. Mm, you never said that. Right. Well, you okay, said there saying, is a magic right. lamp. All right. Fine. There is a magic lamp, and you're holding it. I'm holding it. Okay. Got this magic lamp. I'm going to put it down for a little bit. Oh Jesus! <laughs> it might disappear. Okay. I can come back. Hurry up. I'll pick it up again. <laughs> I picked it up. Um, I would wish first of all for software developers to be better at their job that's the okay. first one I don't right, go on to the second one we'll, we'll, we'll dive back into them okay. so software's Software developers, devs to be better. Make devs great again. 
Okay. Make devs great again, and make them. And and that's this is part of it. The engineers, software engineers. It's a key word. Oh wait! Oh wait! Whoa! Whoa! Careful! What? You're, you're having a second wish here? No, no, no. That's part of first? it. That's elongated on the first. Jeez, it's the same mate. thing. You anyway, got, you got to hope you get a friendly genie because you're tackling. Uh, it's a off. very, it's a very friendly genie. Engineers too. No, no, no. Yeah. What? Engine. Soft- yeah. Software devs to be better. Engineers as well. Not engineers to be better. Oh, okay. That's. I'll get onto that when we get to it. Right. That's number one. Software devs to be better. Two. I would love for there to be, like, I wish everyone in the world would have like global citizenship. Maybe not global citizenship, but at least global residency rights. People should be able to live wherever they like. You live anyway. That's so fucking true. That would be really and nice. Um, it's not like it's not like there'd suddenly be like a disaster where no, everyone would move to one place. It would naturally disperse itself. It would just what would the world look like? Probably the same. Well, let's get into it because I think there's a lot to talk about there. Yeah, all right. We'll we'll go back to number one and we'll save number three. Global citizenship. Wait a minute. Where's Britain? number three? Right. All right, fine. I thought we were going into it. Right, number three. I said we'll get back to it. We'll go into it in a minute. All right, we'll get back to it and go into it in a minute. So I've got... uh, Number one is better software engineers. Number two is global residency slash global citizenship, whichever one the genie is able to do, because, you know, there's a lot of politics around that. Um, Sounds like two wishes, but yeah. No, nah, whichever one he can do, I don't know. Like he needs to give me the guidelines on that one. I, I, it sounds like one wish just for him to find out which one he can do. That's right. That's exactly what it is. I, I found out I can do global citizenship, but I haven't done it because you didn't ask me to. No, I didn't wish for him to tell me the guidelines. Try both and see how far you get. Exactly. <laughs> Jesus. I think that's a fair wish, right? Like you can't argue with that if you're a genie. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of two in one, one and the same thing. Um, my third wish would be um, what would my third be? I I would. I would. I'd fucking. Um. It's it's really difficult the last one because there's lots of things that you can do. Um. Liza's gonna be mad if it's not be with you right now. Well, that's global citizenship, global residency, freedom of movement. Yeah, all right. God, he's always got some things to say, and he's always got a way around it. All right, come on, number three. What is it? I wish. I'm going back in the bottle. <laughs> I wish that. Um, I don't know. I, I wish that. Um, yeah, that's fine. You you can just discard this wish. You can wish for more apple juice in your glass. But that's a wasteful like, wish. Well, yeah, but so's giving three wishes to someone who only knows two. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll discard the wish. I'll give the wish to the genie. Oh, he's given the wish to charity. <laughs> 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 he's just gone by the local ox fam, like stuck it on the door. <laughs> There's a wish, one, one free wish. wish. One wish. They'll probably just put the lamp in the thing for five quid and sell it. <laughs> oh. The only um, person in the world you can give three wishes to who would ask for two. Yeah. I think that's fine. I think that's... Uh... I mean, I could be very cliche or um, cheeky and and and, uh, and and free the genie. Yeah. 
<laughs> free the genie from his bottle. Yeah. Um, anyway, secretly hoping that he'll just be a bitch for the rest of his life, but he loses his powers, so yeah, it's not really worth keeping around. Right, so um, I'm going to choose global citizenship and residency rights. We can talk about software devs being better. But I'm going to give you a really short time on that because I remember you trying to explain that to me before. Okay. Um. So we want to live anywhere, and anyone lives anywhere. And you just have the right to build a house, buy a house, be a house. What? Can I build a house on top of your house? Uh, I said nothing of the sort. I just said global residency I'm not, I'm not, or global saying, citizenship. No, I'm, I'm, I'm questioning. I'm questioning. Where are we, where it are we would going? be unkind to build your house on top of somebody else's house, wouldn't it? Unkind or illegal? Well, it depends on the area that you're living in. I don't know. Where are you living? Where have you um, decided to go? I guess they do it in the slums in Indonesia and they're fine with it. Um, so, global citizenship. I am a citizen. Firstly, we should stop being so Essex and we should say citizen um, of any country in the world. And I can reside in any country in the world. Correct. As long you as have... I abide by their laws. Yeah, you have the right to live anywhere. But that does not exclude you from the law. That does not, like, just because you're a global citizen slash global resident doesn't mean that you can all of a sudden just forget about the law. You obviously still need to abide by the law of wherever you're living. But mm. it's just a, a global treaty that allows anyone to move and live wherever they want to without application. So one, thing, one thing that I find interesting is um, so immigration. I always thought as being a white privileged first world person living in England that when I see things about immigration it's a very first world thing that we all in our lovely countries um, like England um, or America or things like that have people trying to sneak into the country for a better form of life yeah yeah um, and I didn't think it was as much as a problem in, in almost every country, it's like this debate that they have about immigration. Like, and I, I'm, obviously, there are countries that will be more advantageous to immigrate to, perhaps, or that more people do immigrate to. But one thing that amazed me is that, like, I've speaking to, spoken to people playing games in Europe recently, and like they're um, like talking online about their issues they have in their local communities with immigration and people moving like the outsider moving into what they would deem their own and residing there and then them having a problem with that it seems like it's a very common thing it's almost like so to, to go back to nature like i have fish in my fish tank that have specific areas in the tank that they will live and if another fish comes into that area then they have to defend that territory and say that it is theirs and it's yeah. weird it's th weird that in this modern world we we have that. It is, and it's what are you protecting? Exactly, it's. I think you've hit something there, which is that there is something deep within us that almost it's hard to remove, and it's safety in numbers. People feel safe in kind that they are much like shoals of uh fish do but it's probably like ancestral like you you all used to live in little communities and like you'd sharpen your sticks and go and take over another community and that was the fear of like the outside of the person you don't understand coming that's to true your house. that's true and one thing i always hear which is quite it makes me think is like that a lot of people complain that people will migrate and take over, uh, uh, like, so if you have migrants from a certain country moving to another country quite frequently, they might form pockets within society where they come over and, and live as a unit or an entity, like, in a certain area. Um, and that does happen. Yeah, I know, um, but 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 that's a problem. But then I'm like, well, 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 is that a problem? Why is it a problem? Yeah. And then the question is, well, they should adopt our way of lifestyle. What is your way of lifestyle? 
what so if i if, if an indian person i'm just saying indian any country wants to come over and live in the uk okay and they want to migrate here legally or even illegally yeah mm -hmm. um what i have to sit them down in a chair give them a cup of tea and say speak english to me well on what on, on what grounds exactly like, how does that benefit anyone why do why does the person why does the native have any right to to do that to someone they don't and then underneath that all we just took this land from someone else anyway exactly why do we why see here's the thing it's all just, it's all just stories that no one knows and we've just ended up it's like it's like chess moves and and hundreds and hundreds of games and we haven't even kept the notes of like what who happened? moved where and yeah, why yeah. and then we're somehow trying to establish meaning oh but 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 this is mine what yeah no no it's not and you'll die soon and it won't be yours exactly you're just here for a temporary time and wouldn't you rather experience it you know i've lived my whole life in essex which is oh god i mean like it's the greyest landscape that could ever be <laughs> and then you know contrast say lies are out there living in in philippines like we probably want to experience the polar opposites. Like, I'd like to have a bit of Philippines. She'd like to exactly. you know, like one day come here and see you. And she'll be like, oh, this is interesting. This mm. is how these people do things. People are scared of change. And, and you can learn from each other. You can. Like, you can learn a lot. We could push things a lot further. and then, But then the whole conspiracy theory is about like, things trying to come together is always like, oh, one government, one world, like one leader, we all become slaves. And it's like, well... I don't know. Isn't there like a utopian, better society than this where we all just kind of like fucking, you know, we know the lay of the land and we, we know what's right and what's wrong and we just we just figure it out. Can mm. we not get to that point yet? And we could just live anywhere. I think that's a really, really good wish. Good. I'm would glad. people, um, would London be the busiest place alive? You know, what what would happen? Like, so for example... Surely there'd just be places where everyone would just be like, well, I live in a fucking desert and, you know, there's a church up the road and it's just fallen down. Well, I'm it, not living here anymore. Well, but, it, then, but then yeah. maybe those areas people move into and they develop there. Exactly. Because they that was going to be my point. Of land. That it's was going like, to be my it's point. It's like farming. You're just maturing the soil over and over again. Exactly. It's the, oh. it's the places... The places that people would want to go to, which is true now, even without global residency, are the places that have developed the most. So that being like Beijing, Shanghai, Singapore, Australia, the UK, uh, Europe, um, Nigeria, uh, South Africa, um, the United States of America, Canada, Alaska, Japan, like all of these sort of high GDP countries are where people want to go to for certain types of people. But then again, we say that they're where places that people like to go to. Maybe third world countries, they don't actually care enough to keep track of it as much as... Because we, we feel entitled, like we have something to protect. So everyone coming through the borders were like, one, two three, four, and then the newspapers are like, oh my God, so many people coming into our country. And then everyone's really scared about it coming into our country. But in reality, it's just the same amount of people going anywhere in the world. Like, I mean, yeah. I, I, there probably is a slant, but like... I think the issue enough, is... Enough to care, especially yeah. when your life's already good and people are starving on the other side of the fence. Well, that's that's it. I, this is going to go into, this is going to lead nicely into my point. Um... The reason people move is to better their lives, which you've already said. And the pe the reason why people are scared of um, legal immigrants or illegal immigrants, whatever the case may be, is because they are scared that they will take their jobs. And it's a rational fear to have because we're quite, as you said, quite privileged in this country and other Western countries and even China in that we we earn good money and there's regulations in place that enforce employers to pay us a good wage 
um, that isn't the case in a lot of countries in, in most countries in the world that isn't the case so when um, and this happened in uh, the 20th century with the Polish um, coming to this country they weren't doing economically that well there wasn't um, they weren't as developed as us whatever the case may be so they came here and they seeked work and they got work which drove the cost of uh, building contracting work down because a lot of them were building contractors um, so th there's a lingering sense of uh, they will come and take our jobs and that's a threat to us which is a rational fear to have but um, it's, As it's not move, right hopefully that will subside so like companies now like my company's an example I'm not going back to an office like probably ever again and I can't imagine even after this job going back to an office and not working from home but mm more companies will start to do that and at that point maybe you can hire like globally and maybe you can uh well that's level the playing field yeah that's that's maybe one good thing that we can take away from coronavirus is uh distributed workers this actually segues into uh something i've been thinking about so um Lockdown's funny, one, because it changes the way your life is and there's never really an announcement of these laws that you have have now changed. And I kind of wanted to touch on that, but what I also wanted to ask was out of any of the rules that are in place right now or that you think should just be brought in, that should change during lockdown. So here's one that I've been thinking of, for example, is that especially in the start of lockdown, I was noticing that no one was driving on the roads. And it was like you could drive around at two o'clock and it would be like it was like four in the morning. It's like mm. three or four cars, like a few grandparents going shopping, like no one really doing anything. Yeah. That was at the start, so this doesn't really count anymore because now you go outside and it's like a fucking it's like summer holiday, everyone's like driving around everywhere. Yeah. But at the start I was imagining, okay, so we're gonna cut costs in certain areas. How can we make people's lives better? Okay, let's increase thirty miles an hour to forty miles an hour because there's no one on the roads. Because I was driving around, I was like because it was so slow where I was like, I could just drive at 50. I could literally drive at 50 and my life wouldn't be a difference. But then I thought, but if I did see a police car, I'm the only car on the road and I'm going at 50 miles an hour. They're definitely going to notice me. So obviously <laughs> I drive at 30 and I was like, Wee. and actually today I came to the realization of, well, actually I think I'm driving at 27 miles an hour. Why am I doing that? Because driving around is nice. I was driving down the high street and I was like just looking at things, like watching an old man walk, like just observing pigeons. And I was like, this is like a whole new TV program that isn't my two bedroom flat. <laughs> so, you know, I might have to start driving at 20. Maybe they need to make people drive at 20 miles an hour just so they've got something to do. <laughs> but, I, but that is my point, is that there are definitely rules that can change that could make people's lives better. Um, um, so I didn't know. I, I didn't know if there's any. I don't know. I, don't, um, I might need more time to think about. I'm going to start throwing them out there then. So what if when you went to Sainsbury's, you had to put like a two meter ring, like a hoop around your waist? <laughs> like the bumper cars <laughs> and as you were walking like all the nonces that were trying to get in your personal space would like buzz off each other Four they'd spots. be like th three strikes and you're out if you if you set anyone's thing off like, <laughs> <laughs> I do like the idea of um, so one thing that has changed uh, in supermarkets there is a dedicated entrance and a dedicated exit seems weird we didn't have that 
were people just flying in and out? Like, what was going on yeah, before? Yeah, it was chaos. It used to drive me mad. People just like, <laughs> you know, like, just with their shopping carts and just yeah. ramming, like, tra- using them bumper carts, just ramming them into each other. Oh, can't see around the corner, but I'm going to go anyway, and you're going to crash. And what I've, I've had this thought for a long time, particularly in supermarkets, is... I think people should be required to pass a trolley test. <laughs> yeah. All right. Wait, 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 wait. All right. In turn, let's try and list what are some of the rules? What are the requirements for a sufficient trolley driver? Okay. It's, so it, I'll, right. Go on. I'll throw one out. Okay. When you're in the queue, when you're in the aisle and you're about to get something from a shelf, you take your trolley and you put it against the wall on the side where you are going to get something. You then remove the item from the shelf, place it in the basket in the trolley, and then go on around your business. You don't leave your trolley in the middle of the aisle. You don't leave it sideways so that it's blocking two-thirds of the aisle, and you don't leave it on the other side of the aisle. I've even gone as far as to go down an aisle and to know, right, I need three things. At which point I can see, okay, no one is at the left top of the left aisle. So I'll tuck my trolley in, walk down the aisle, collect three items, put it in the trolley, and that's it. I've just done what one person would have done with a trolley in five minutes, and I've done it in thirty seconds. I that's 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 a that's that's a good one. I would have chosen that one if you hadn't taken it first. Um, now I would take it further in that there should be like a minimum intelligence level. An like, IQ test. Not, yeah, kind of like an yeah. IQ test. Like, show them it's, like it's... shapes. Do these shapes fit together? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> does this, like there's a really big block and an aisle and it's like, does this aisle block fit down the aisle in yeah. sideways? Like, yeah, I <laughs> yeah. get you. Um, well, not only that, it's also just... Just give them ones the sticky wheels. <laughs> they're, like, they're really slow like, <laughs> Watch the, out, we got they, they don't turn they're just they're fixed yeah. front wheels <laughs> and you'd, you'd know it was a trolley retard and everyone would make way they'd be like watch out we've got a clanker <laughs> uh, um, really. I, I think um, so the, the idea of the minimum intelligence uh, test is like um, the equivalent of the trolley theory test um, is that there are certain products in the supermarkets that are in high demand. So in the UK, a high demand product would be milk. And in all supermarkets in the UK, there's a milk section where they're all on those aluminium trolleys and they just slide them under the shelves and people just go in and grab milk. So that needs to be like a restricted area like a no-go zone for trolleys but you should not take a trolley and leave it where the milk is because people always need to get milk everybody that goes in the supermarket goes in and they get milk right there are you've got like you've got hot zones and there are hot zones yeah there are hot yeah exactly there are some products like the like the deli counter Nobody goes, like very few people go to the deli counter. So that's an okay yeah. place to leave your trolley if you want to for a minute or two. Yeah. Um, and the, the woman at the deli counter is just like, oh, I'm so fucking useless. Yeah. They just leave, they just leave trolleys in front of me. <laughs> One day someone will come. Anyway, go. Yeah. Um, and that's it. I, I think that's a, a fair rule. Is, I, um, is trolley, trolley gliding allowed? I think in an empty aisle, trolley gliding is fine. I saw someone trolley glide into the shop today. <laughs> what do you, you mean trolley? You... What do you mean trolley glide? So trolley gliding is when you like you got a free aisle, <laughs> and you need to get to the end of it. And rather than walking, you like you do like a four or five step run, and then you lean forward on the bars and like Superman glide. Aren't You've you never done that? Yeah, the... and it like uh, yeah. it starts to spin slowly. And then someone comes around the corner and looks nope. at you and you're like, <laughs> sometimes you, you either stop and you're like, yeah, I was fucking trolley gliding. Or you just zoom past them. It's like, yep, <laughs> I'm fucking trolley gliding. Because <laughs> um, I swear on the, on the frozen aisle, 
I will trolley glide quite often. Now, I tend not to go down the frozen aisle. I rarely need things in the frozen aisle. Yeah, that's because you live the proper life. You're not living that frozen life. Well, I, I do sometimes like to get um, French fries, so, chips, yeah, or whatever. Um, but we we rarely go down. We usually get like fresh pizzas. Yeah. And freeze them. I bet it's been a while since you've shopped together. That's like one of your bonding things, isn't it? You go food shopping together, you and your well, dad. I, yeah, I try. Um, I try and keep him at home. So you're you're going out. <laughs> yeah, I go out. Does he does he secretly like? Do you ever spot him wanting to get out, or does he just like? Uh, he goes for it? walks. He goes for like he does about around what time is it now? Oh, he's already been for a walk. He goes to yeah. for a walk around seven o'clock. And he just walks around the neighbourhood. Yeah. And walks back. Um, if a minimum IQ test is too much for people uh, to accept, and a trolley theory test, then I know that we should do. You know, when you go to the gym and they like induct you to the gym, they should just do that. Just do an like, induction. Yeah. As soon as they give you a trolley, it's like, is this your first time using a trolley? <laughs> is this like, your first no. time? <laughs> <laughs> you're like, no. And if you're that dumb that you say yes. Then you're like, yeah. Please come with us, sir. We just need to give you the trolley induction. Now, take you around the shop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, a bet an alternative to this is you don't have trolleys um, that like freewheeling trolleys. You just build like um, tram tracks, and your trolley and everybody's Dude, just funneled around. You might be on something there, and <laughs> that's it. You imagine, you imagine, you're like shit we need the beans and you're like just at the end of the beans are you gotta like stretch your arm out and your, yeah. your motor chairs like taking your pass like bit by bit <laughs> you oh, could you God. could fit you'd have to wait to do a whole lap to get the beans again <laughs> well you know you'd shout to the person behind you'd be like yeah i need to chuck beans. us some beans like, <laughs> chuck them up the aisle oh but they wouldn't because obviously all your hands would have coronavirus on by that time yeah you'd all be dead yeah. so he fucking trolley glided into the store. We didn't really touch on that enough. Yeah, go I'm on. Just saying. Well, I was just, I was leaving the store. How old was this person? He was like, he was like probably 20. I now, think. the issue and is with trolley gliding at that me, age. It gave me, yeah, well, no, but it gave me hope because I thought, well, you're 20 and you're not like around here. You'd normally be on drugs or in a group of four on BMXs or something stupid, like being a dick. Uh -huh. I know you're trolley gliding, which is being a dick, but like it was a sight to see. It yeah. was one of the most eventful things in lockdown. The door <laughs> opened. <and> it fucking <laughs> straight down the gift aisle. <laughs> I couldn't believe it, honestly. Now, the, the risk of trolley gliding at that age, like it's fine to trolley glide if you're you know, between six and maybe 14 years old. <clears throat> but if you trolley glide at our age um, and there's nothing in the basket, uh, you really have to put your weight forward, otherwise there is the potential that you might do a wheelie. Yeah, you might do a wheelie and then fall on your face. Yeah, no, I've, I've got it all down. Honestly, so I tend to, on the I... uh, on the bigger, you know, the bigger trolleys. There's actually a foot spot above the wheel, and you can put your foot on it like a skateboard or a scooter, mm. and those ones. But then the, the problem is, is like that's a big, like if a six year old runs out in front of you, you you probably mowed them down. Yeah, that's that's also another risk. Well, that's another uh, rule that I think I would make. Is I'll trolley spin. Sorry to interrupt, but I'll trolley spin. So imagine I'm going around a corner. It might be more useful for me to actually spin the trolley in front of me and then push it from the top, not the handles, and rotate it around the corner. I'd actually go as far as to say that I've actually impressed people with my trolley use. Yeah, I think people look at me and they're like, "I want to drive a trolley like that." Yeah, he's got all of the all of the tests. Maybe only seven year olds that live in the sort of life that I do. You could but be paid to push a trolley for I someone. Could, I could be the fucking induction person. <laughs> I could trolley trick shots. Maybe there's a maybe there's an maybe avenue there's there. Something to that, yeah. Maybe that's the first video we do on YouTube. Trolley trick shots. <laughs> no, do you know what? Maybe that's our first YouTube video. How to use a trolley in a shopping um, in a shopping uh, center? <laughs> Not a shopping center. What's it called? A supermarket. Trolley driving for dummies. Yeah, 
I actually, I think that's got legs on it. Potentially. Or or, uh, or wheels. Um, so, hang on a minute. How do we get here? Rules that you change in lockdown, and these were rules for how to use a trolley. But yeah, I mean, we were, we were, we got there? We were touching on supermarkets. Um, I think you, you had something else. No, I think that was it. But um, I didn't. To be honest with you, my life hasn't really changed that much being in lockdown. Tell us about yourself, one sentence only. It's quite a complex one. I, I like to keep myself to myself. Maybe that's it. Potentially, yeah. I've found as I've grown up that removing oneself from most things is beneficial. Rem like like uh, removing yourself from people? Or what do you mean? People, equations, environments. Groups. Just most, I mean, it's like I fucking talk to you most of the time. It's like, there's, I think it's like, oh, it sounds so pessimistic because I really admire people like Claudia and I think Liza's quite similar that like they have this open beaming view of optimism from the world. Like anyone could like, they could meet anyone and they just have this expectation of them being brilliant and being amazing. And maybe that's naive for me to say that about those people, but like, I feel like as I've grown older, I don't think I would. So you say you're a uh, extrovert. Yeah. Introvert. An introvert. That's the one. I probably use the wrong word quite a lot of times. No, that's the only time you've used it wrong. Okay. So you say you're an introvert and I think that, it's funny because if I was to go back and if you'd ask people I went to uni with like, oh, is Tim an introvert or an extrovert or, or people I went to school with? I think they'd probably at school, they'd have said I was an extrovert. At university, I think I would have been like an intriguing introvert in the sense that like I kept myself to myself. But, but when I was there, I was there and you freaking knew I was there. And then now I feel like it's just like. I think I've learned the lesson of like, don't put out into the world something that you're not necessarily going to get back. And I think that's probably a bad lesson. I think it's probably wrong, but I think it's been like something that I've conditioned myself into. If that makes sense. Yeah. I've, I've, if I think about when you put yourself out there for Liza, that was like one of the best things you ever did. Yeah. Mm. Think about when you put yourself out there for your job at eMove. Like that wasn't something you traditionally do. And like it, 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 I don't know what you'd be doing right now if you hadn't done that. I think you'd be, I think you'd be fine. But you know what I mean? I wouldn't be sitting in the shed. I think you'd be like doing struggle. I think you'd be struggling to like. This sounds horrible, yeah. I think you're very talented, but I think you'd be doing something like following sound engineering and like keeping yourself in the shadows and not. I agree. And not pushing, and because it's such a shadow industry where there is little success to be found, kind of being content with that, and that's fine. Maybe you would have a shit. Maybe it'd still be your dad's. I, I've got no idea, but, like, mm. I think I think it was... We spoke about this before. I don't think we should always harp on about it, but I think it was an interesting point in your life when you got the job at eMove, which no one really knows what that is, so that's a topic for another where, time. We used to sell houses. Okay. Can you just give me two minutes? Not even that. I, it's just my thermometer is saying 24.2 degrees Celsius. We don't deal with any of this Fahrenheit. That's and... fine. I need two minutes. Be right back. Okay.
Hello. Hello. I was going to say you actually, uh, after that incredible intro, you've had no sound issues. Humidity issues. Humidity no issues. No sound, which I'm, I'm very surprised at. I think the um, the driver downgrade worked for this this old boy. Oh, I think the driver downgrade for my sound card is working absolutely spectacular. Anyway, for those people that were interested in my first wish, I think I'll um, maybe record a small segment at some point. And no, I was gonna, I was gonna let you go into that. So, that uh, I was gonna let you go into that, but I was gonna say, just, just be careful, okay? Just be careful. I'll keep it short. I uh, promise to keep it short. Software devs to be better. Software devs to be better. We all have computers. Well, I wouldn't say all of us, but if you're listening to this, you probably have some sort of device that you're listening to it on. Either a smartphone, iPhone, Android, um, a Windows machine, a Macintosh or some Linux machine, maybe an Xbox or a PS4, one of those I devices. Our audience is that fast. Imagine May- if we had one of each. That'd be great. Now, maybe nobody's listening, which means there are no devices. However, we've all... Ex- I'll, prob- I'll, I'll probably listen to it back myself. Ah, oh, that's nice. We've all experienced something loading like um loading please wait loading please wait yeah or the spinning 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 wheels wheels. yeah um that's what i don't want and there's a lot of times you upgrade things like you've got a windows update or an Android update, or an iPhone update, or an Xbox update, or whatever it is, you run it, and things seem to get worse. So what I would love, what my wish is, is for people to stop adding code, and instead send updates that are negative megabytes. And start removing code so that things can get better. That's what I'll say on that. And the last thing I'll say is, as an analogy to this, your computer screen or your TV, they don't break. They don't, you don't turn on your monitor or you don't, turn on your TV and it doesn't work. It always works. And that you don't need to update the firmware in, in your TV or your, or your monitor. They just work. And they work all the time, every time. All software should be that good. That's so it's it. like we should... Um, so like in a way that science has like a bar of understanding of like, yeah, we now agree that gravity exists. There should be a similar consensus that has to be found within software development. So if something is developed, there should be a standard and a threshold that it has to meet to the point where no user should ever incur the, the, the need to to wait. Update it again. Not necessarily update. Is, no, is, you do want to update, but to incur inconvenience at inco- the expense exactly. of any development. Exactly. Because, because the point is it's almost backwards. You, when you develop, you spend effort. So someone sits there at a screen and they are coding something, trying to make something out of numbers, letters, whatever platform or language they're using. Yeah. And then for someone to receive the product, and to actually have to go to effort on their side. It's almost like making a car like that creates pollution. It's like, it's like we can get past these things. We should be able to, and actually when you think about it, when there is so, when there's a desire for so many developers to be working right now, because every company wants a developer, 
maybe that's the problem in the way is that so many people are getting into development so many people say that they're a developer when in reality but even i think at work we were having this discussion that we were having like a little bit at the start of the covid crisis we were having standards slip in our code and having more bugs appear because we weren't doing the right sort of unit tests or things like that um and like senior developers were aware of it but some developers weren't and like it's yeah it's 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 just interesting that those things occur yeah but that's assume it is human error at the end of the day isn't it there will come a time when that doesn't happen it's it's a it's a whole mess of things um the last thing i'll say is like the gamers of this world people that play games on consoles or on um i mean like top quality games like triple a games um that are made by EA or whatever. Um, let's take like Battlefield for example. These these games are extremely complex. They are simulating physics and lighting, which are insanely difficult to for a PC to compute. It's it's a lot of work for them to do, but they run at sixty frames per second, and they never never drop a frame if 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 they drop a frame they don't like it's game over they won't ship it that's taken to the exaggeration but like triple a games have that standard yet i open up discord it takes at least 10 seconds for discord to load why does it take 10 seconds to load that's that 10 seconds is an eternity for my computer that's yeah it is it's like a level of like that's 600 that, frames yeah but it's like these weird things that you accept like going back to sainsbury's like as soon as you walk into a supermarket the store manager you will line up and he just slaps you in the face once and then you carry on like you wouldn't accept that yeah exactly what why like, do we accept you know, it? why is it we have this level of acceptance it's because technology over the time has gone so quickly i think maybe this is the answer the like obviously like I could go back to when I used to play games on my grandma's computer when I was like six or seven and like the wait time for those things to work and everything like that. Everything was finding its way bit by bit. I guess it's also the way that humans build things, which is we we layer on top of each other. So for yeah. example, TVs getting thinner, um, you know, technology like a computer then going into a phone. Same with software. We develop on top of software, Google, mm -hmm. Google plugins. Uh, Google was a website. Now it's Chrome. Now it's a browser. We're going down this route of like someone first made the PC, and software has been developed within the PC. Now it's within phones, and it's just like this endless cycle of like endless okay, mess. Yeah, there's never there's not a centralized body where someone is paid to go and look at. Oh, okay. The start button is in the bottom left on on most computers. Is that the most convenient? Or maybe there shouldn't be a start button like all these weird things that people aren't actually thinking about just because people aren't thinking, how can I improve the old? They're thinking, oh, what can I do next? What can I do next? Yeah. Uh, a large problem of software industry is people... People that build software, and not, not the engineers, but the people that want the software to be made don't care enough they don't well they don't care at all about performance they don't care about if they inconvenience a user all they care about is is my product making money and what features do i need to add for me to make more money mm. um but i'll wrap this up with taking excel as an example Excel is a good piece of software. It hasn't changed much since the first spreadsheet software in 1980. It's basically the same thing. It just looks nicer. Um, but the latest version of Microsoft on a decent computer takes two seconds to load. How many people in the world use Excel? A lot of people use Excel. Times that times all of those people how many times do they open up excel a day let's say they just open it once a day that's a lot of seconds in a year that are being wasted 
by loading up a program. Now it doesn't seem like much, but it adds up. It adds like up my, when you play a game on your PC and then you look at Steam and it tells you you've spent a month of your life playing that game, mm. and you're like, "Oh fuck, that happened." And that's that's what people don't care. They people don't care about how much time they're wasting. How much? It's excess. It's our our um, appetite or our I guess our threshold for how much excess we can we can live with. Yeah. Just like waste. There should be. A... Here's, oh, here's, I've got a question. I've got okay. a question. All right. Okay. So, as I've been driving around a lot, I've been hearing radio adverts. I now listen to classical FM. I am definitely an old person, um, and I'm really enjoying driving around listening to classical music. Mm -hmm. So, one of the adverts is from. I think it's from Thames Water. And the advert is basically, if it's not made of paper, don't flush it because it can cause clogs mm -hmm. in, the, uh, in, the, in the system and everything like that, yeah. And I think to myself that our water source isn't... I'm hoping you can just correct me and say I'm thinking about this wrongly. Our water source in the UK is privatised, which means that we pay for water from companies that own the supply of water. So it's not a public service. Okay. Now, people are now wiping their bums with wet wipes and wiping their babies' bums with wet wipes. And girls are using makeup and, you know, all these things, tampons, everything. Okay. And things are getting flushed down the toilet, which is causing a block in the sewage. Okay. And one thing that's really frustrating me is that, yeah, I think that's a problem. Like, we should all make an effort. Like, let's pull together, guys, whatever, okay? I can kind of get a bit of that, especially 10 years ago, especially if it was public. But now that it's private, I think to myself, okay, so you bought these water lines to service people water, which should literally be a free thing anyway, in my opinion. And now they're clogging up because humans and their use for these water pipes is now changing. So your product should probably adapt. You should probably figure that out. You know, how can you fix that? Are you going to change the pipe size? Are you going to put some filters in? Are you going to send people down there? You know, all these things. But instead, no, you make an advert and you say, from Thames Water, we must pull together to make sure that we keep the water pipeline safe. Okay. And I was like, what? Why is it our job? That's my question. Well, I know it's our job. I know we should do that. But you're making money out of my water supply. Is that is that like? Well, they have costs too. Yeah, they have costs, but it's just like fuck. Like, why would you? It, it's like okay. So I build a product, okay, and my customers can't use the product because it's not really working, mm -hmm. okay. Actually, no. Here's an example. So we we'll go to blockchain, okay, which is a sector that me and Woody both sort of working loosely um so eth layer 2 is having scaling issues every transaction that is going through the eth blockchain is making the gas fees for the transactions high yeah which is an inconvenience to the users and it's like eth instead of trying to fix that putting an advert on the radio and saying <laughs> guys Stop, stop using the blockchain. Because... Stop, using, stop using our product, okay? <laughs> you know those transactions? Just stop. It's clogging it. up Calm the system. Down. Yeah. <laughs> stop buying Bitcoin. Stop buying crypto. Stop trading ETH. Just calm down, all right? Because you know what? We can't take it. You're clogging us up. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's literally like that. That's my comparison. And on the, I get it. We can all make an effort to make a difference. Uh, but, like, I listen to that, and I'm like, I can't wait to go home and take a shit. <laughs> <laughs> just because it just makes me angry. Because you, you know there's someone at the top of it who's making loads of money, who's probably like, you know, there's probably someone clever in the room like us who's saying, you know what, let's fix this we situation. Try and change, yeah, yeah. Look at this little wet wipe. I'm not going to become his bitch. This wet wipe can be broken. I'm going to find out how to break this bitch. You know what? I might recycle it. I might make it into something better. We might get all of these shit wipes and turn it into, into gold. I don't know. 
Mm. We can probably make money out of these. What someone's thinking in the room, yeah. But the guy at the top's like, um, let's just buy some radio space. Let's buy some radio space and tell people to stop shitting on wipes. <laughs> so, um, so that's it. If you're out there, Thames Water. And here's another thing. I've got a water bill to pay. Okay. Um, they've emailed me. They've called me. I always pay my bills on time. I've gone onto the website and I've sent them like three screenshots on three different browsers. Every time I get to the checkout, it says, you have £154 to pay. I'm like, yep, sweet, click, check this most days. Go to put in my card. The payment service pops up and then it disappears. Sorry, our payment, our payment uh, gateway oh. has failed. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I, I'm like, one, does my credit score go down? I don't think so. It's a water bill. Maybe not. Two, why do I have to keep checking? And then three, I emailed them and they were like, hi, um, it's going to take us a while to get back to you. Can you get back to me with your account number? And it's going to be about 10 days because we're really busy because we've got loads of stuff because of coronavirus and we're understaffed. No one's paying their water bill. I was like, this is the same email address that I have for my account and you want my account number. Mm. Just search my email address. Do you know what I mean? I know. I understand your frustration. Things should be better. I don't think it's that software devs should be better. It's that as a unit, as a society, we should raise our we should raise our efforts to be better. And how we could do that, in my opinion, would be to do things like, okay, you work four hours a day. People work four hours a day. They might actually think when they're working. Well, I've got a lot of ideas about this, so I think it would be good to keep those for um, to keep that discussion. Can you write that down so that we don't forget it? Ways in which we can imp- what we think we can improve society um, through socio-economic um, policies. I think that would be a common theme in most of our podcasts. Yeah. All right. I think. To sum up, I'll whip out the last question. Okay. (sighs) Deep breath. If you could change one event in time, nothing to do with World War I or World War II, what would it be? The disclaimer is that I just thought that everyone would say the Holocaust. So I said nothing to do with World War II. And then I also added on World War One, as I didn't know if that would be offensive to say that, you know, I'm removing this because of the Holocaust. Because sure. I think that's what everyone says to that sort of a question. But I think there's more things you can change in the world. So so what sort of things well, would the, you change? I'll tell you the first thing that popped into my mind. What was it? Um, have you seen the film, um, is it Lucy? Uh, what, when she gets electronic stuff into her brain? No, ele- she gets- not an electronic. It's just a drug, like a oh, like radioactiveness or something. Yeah, just so she becomes like a superpower sort of thing. Yeah, but the yeah. the whole film is it goes. It's called Lucy, and the, I think I believe one of the last scenes is she like time travels. Oh and no, she becomes a supercomputer in a USB stick, doesn't she? Yeah, but as part of that process that she goes through. Spoilers alert, by the way. If nobody's seen it, it's a brilliant film. Well, it's an okay film. It's um, like a seven. It, it could be better. It could be better, but it's definitely the an first, interesting watch. The first half an hour, 45 minutes, will make you intrigued, and then you will slowly decline from there. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and she goes all the way back in time, and s- she's sitting on like an office chair, I think, and she sees the first human like the first like the first like lineage of a human which kind of looks like an ape but kind of has the characteristics of a human um anyway so the first thing that popped into my mind is i would go back to that point and just kill it <laughs> as soon as you said go back to that point I heard what you said yeah just kill it yeah just killed a lot of them yeah what would you do um, if 
I could change one event in time. Oh, God. Do you know what? These questions, like, I've only just realized now I'm asking you them. They are so hard to answer. I on know. The spot yeah, I know. Because they're like, they're like questions where you've got, like, it's like, dude, this is life or death. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna die on this hill. Like, what is my answer? Even right now, I'm saying this stuff, but my mind's like trying to think, like trying it's to. It's racing off worried. in the depth somewhere, thinking, trying to think I don't of know something. If I'm gonna forget what I'm trying to say in real life, or if my head's gonna think of something in real life. <laughs> Let me think about reading the question, then I'll get some more time. If you could change one event in time, but nothing to do with World War One or World War Two, what would it be? So whilst Tim's thinking, I'll um, people might f have thought that what I said is like, you know, maybe I'm a psychopath or something. Um, I could be, um, but I think the the core reason why as to why I would do that is because I think. I love how I didn't even have to ask why you would do that. I just knew. <laughs> I didn't even think about explaining that to the audience because I'd probably agree with you. But yeah, keep going. Yeah. Um, we we are no better than what we think rats are in the streets. We carve up land. We destroy things all for our own good. Um, and not for our own good as a species, which some animals do. This has given me my answer. Keep going. Um, but for our own good, personal, we like personal gain, which I don't think is good for a species to have. Now, the thing that separates us from animals is we have a thing in our head that is so powerful that allows us to basically do whatever we want. We can sculpt the world in whichever way we want, and all we use it for is for personal gain, which is why I would go back in time and destroy that first human, because there is no way that we can get past this idea of greed and doing things for ourselves. If you uh, can't get wait, rid of it, wait. then you have to destroy it. But maybe there is. Before I say my answer, okay, okay. so... If life is survival of the fittest, like evolution, like, now, a like snowball roll, I, I need it's a snowball rolling down a hill. Okay? I need you to define survival of the fittest because there are there is one concept that's taught quite a lot in schools, which is actually the wrong way to define survival of the fittest. Um, well, what I mean by survival of the fittest isn't necessarily the Darwinian thing of it, but what I mean is that life is like this unstoppable force that is evolving and spreading similar to a disease similar to a virus okay in yeah. the sense of from the first like philogelium or whatever you'd call it like the first flange the first cell mm -hmm. and then the things that it evolved into right down to me having this conversation with you and whatever comes next okay so life is always putting its foot forward now we are at a point where we have always had to be putting our foot forward to achieve the best results for ourselves because we've been biologically predetermined to do so. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And yes, there might be a time where we realize that actually, if we put the foot forward for each other, that will benefit us best. However, life won't allow that because we are not at that time yet. We are not as powerful as life. The force of life is more powerful than us, and we can only live our lives in respect of it. And that's why we live the way that we live. If we were going to live differently, if we were going to do things differently, we'd be doing them differently. However, we have this fear of what comes next. And we are at this point where, you know, what could we evolve into next? Do I need another head? No. Do I need to be taller? No. What do I actually need now? I probably need to be more nimble. I don't need to fight anymore. My head is most important. If my head is most important, then it means my brain is most important. And that means the things that I do with my brain are the things that are most important. What do humans do with their brain? They create problems. No, they don't create problems. They solve problems and they create things. Okay. Mm -hmm. We invent things. We make things. We pick up stone. We pick up dirt. We pick up water pick up loads of things and we've learned how to put these things together to make things similar 
to like Minecraft, the adventure from starting out as a first character, the things you make and the things you can make if you look on YouTube and you see the final hacks, like of all these crazy things you can make here. We're doing that in life. And we're at the point now, or sometime soon, not where we can create life, but where we can create a technology that actually offers a better life, whether it be AI or supported living systems where you live inside a, you know, a realm of different existence or whatever. Mm -hmm. But maybe what I'm trying to get at is the point of life is simply we're running a race and it's like an Olympic race and you have four relay runners. And one of those runners that carries the baton is called life. And it's similar to physics being the first one, which causes the start of the universe, where there wasn't any life to start with. But then one day there was life. And the second baton can be technology. And one day life will pass itself over to technology. And technology will no longer have the wait times that you don't like, or the waste that we cause, or the pain that we cause, or the suffering that we cause. So... I guess what I'm trying to say is maybe our fear of leaving, getting ourselves over to technology is just the fact of the inevitable that we are this disease that you speak of. So maybe don't go back in time and kill us. Maybe just wait a bit longer. I'm quite happy with that. Okay. Um, I'll, uh, that's a nice closing statement for my for my answer. What was your answer? Um... I actually had it, but I lost it when I was thinking of that. So you were saying something. You said. The was, harm that we cause. Yeah. We're like. Rats yeah, that was in it. Okay, so, okay, right, fine. So mine was a sort of offshoot from that, which was undoubtedly as a species we have done some crazy things and i think there's no debating we're going to do more crazy things but somewhere along the way amazing things have happened for example um art like cave paintings that we find that are millions of years old or mm -hmm. leonardo da vinci's paintings or you know the cathedral um you know, the Roman paintings and stuff like that, like all these amazing things that have sort of not withstood time, but withstood the last bit of time that we see as a chapter that actually matters, because I think that humans have been here a lot longer than we think. But the passing down of history, you know, all of the beautiful things that we do, and that's kind of it is the word of like beauty, like this concept of, okay, so there is all this wastage, there is all this other crazy stuff going on, but as we danced in the poo, doing all these stupid things, not thinking about what we were doing, there's this like side avenue, which is where humans tap into their like their inner creativity, that like magical place. Like when I said about um, three boys, me, your, your brother, and Joe Pratton in in the bedroom, like him on the bongos, two of us on guitar, just going at it, and something magical happened. Just like sounds cringy, but when you go and see a music festival. There are moments where, to you, it feels magical. And I think that quite a lot of people get that hair feeling on the back of their um, neck, like this is a moment that's important. I think people get that when they look at certain works of art. I think there's less of it going around in the world now because I think the doors are closing in on creativity in the sense that we've done a lot of it. Um, it's mass produced. Um, maybe that's a young person's way to look at the world. I don't know. but. I guess if I could change one event in time, it would be to go back to a time where I think things mattered most, which would be somewhere in the Roman time or something. And I don't know enough about history. I'm just estimating that that time would be good. But basically to go back to a time when people were doing those creative things and there wasn't all of this technology in the way, um, they were just starting to get a grip of like governance and you know i know they still had slaves but in, in due course they would get rid of them and just to say to them like hold on to that creativity and push it further and let it guide your society don't necessarily just think of it as like something you do in your spare time because i think of where we've ended up now today like art is music that's mass produced by like five record labels that just churn out shit um 
I don't know about the art scene, like in terms of painting and stuff like that, but it's all kind of like, I can imagine it's pretty much the same as that. Like just a few people are famous and make it through every year and then no one else does. And in the end, it's all about the money and trading these paintings for money rather than actually appreciating art. I might be wrong yeah. about that. No, I think you've hit the nail on the head. I think there's a toxicity to the industry that we have now. And I think... I don't necessarily the same, same with actors. Like, look at actors yeah. when they talk. Like, I can watch an interview for these actors, yeah, and it's like they are so torn up on sucking their own dick for so many years. And I don't blame them for it because people suck their dick as well. People say to them every day, you know, they walk down the street, they're someone special. They can't be themselves. They can't be no one. They have mm-hmm. to be someone. So you wake up and you look in the mirror and you're like, yeah, I'm a big deal. I'm going to do an Instagram video. It's going to like get shitload of likes. I bet it doesn't fill you with satisfaction, but no, still, no. Um, I think for some time it probably does, but I think it wears off. But that would be what I'd want to say. It's like, just protect art. And there are actors out there who really care about it. Um, See, that's what I was going to say. I think there that really care about it. It's like everything I say, there's a double-edged sword to it. There is always the opposite side, but I think I just, I'd want to protect that um, and harness it more. Yeah. There is artists out there that they there are people out there that produce I don't want to say produce because producing is is not the right word when you're talking about art but that create things that are that beautiful but they just don't see their time they don't get the the shine that they deserve yeah um <clears throat> and what is that at that point is that art or is it nothingness? It's still art, I think. Knowing knowing that, like that art exists makes it art. No one, yeah, but it's like if a tree falls in the woods and no one sees it. If I draw the most amazing picture that no one's ever seen, that if they did see it, would be renowned as the best picture ever drawn, but no one saw it, and then I burnt it. Did I ever draw that? Was it a piece of art? I mean, it was. I don't know. Yeah, there's a good... Um... Monty Python sketch about about that. It's called the funniest joke that ever existed. <laughs> and um, I don't know if anyone's seen it. You probably haven't seen it, but essentially, the sketch is a TV sketch from Monty Python, and it's a bit of paper. You don't ever see what's on the paper, and nobody ever reads out the joke. But when people read the joke, they die from laughter. Anyway, that's it. Um, I I think. Well, so here's the thing, right? Is um, the art that that you look up to, um, that you mentioned, like historical art. They may not have been. I mean, a lot of those were commissioned by like monarchs and leaders. Um, so the Sistine Chapel was uh, commissioned by somebody to for some for an artist to come in and paint it. Um, now that stood the test of time because it was painted on stone, essentially. Um, things like the Stonehenge, which isn't necessarily art, but uh, they're the the things that you appreciate when you look back at them are the things that stood the test of time or not just stood the test of time, but that managed to weather, weather through the time. Um, Yeah. It's like time gives them like, so if I find in my attic an old artist from like the 1700s within good condition that no one's ever seen before, the time has given it value in a sense. Yeah. The time has given it beauty, not necessarily value, but it's given it its beauty. It's like this old thing that, someone said that um like how do you sell something where you put a story to it and then i remember when i was on a date with claudia i was in i was in london going through covent garden you know covent garden has like the market stalls yeah and uh there's a guy selling a load of vintage watches okay and um like i liked a few of the watches and he asks like which one do you like yeah 
And it's not that I like vintage watches. I've never been into vintage watches. I've never been a watch person in general because I think they get scratched, lost, or I have my mobile phone. Um, and I'm not much of a fashion guy anymore. Um, but I looked at them and I thought, do you know what? Like, nice green leather strap. Like, I think that'd do quite nicely. Get one of those. Got the money. Might as well get one. There's like three that I liked. And he, uh, he ruined it, didn't he? Do you know why? Because he started selling me the story. And he told, the story. Me the most, he told me the most captivating story about, like, because it had a certain tick to it that was rare in Sweden at the time of it being made. Um, and it was around this sort of time. I think it was post-war, but it still had some sort of relevance. Uh, and I did a lap around Covent Garden and I walked past him again. And I just thought to myself, you know what? If I buy that watch, I'm not just buying it because I like it. I'm going to look at that watch. And every day I'm going to remember the story that he told me and how it's probably bullshit. <laughs> yeah. And I'm just going to think, you're a mug. So I never bought it. But yeah. like, I bet it works a treat on some people. And that's a, that's a lesson to you out there. If you're, uh, if you're questioning a purchase and someone's whispering a, a story in your ear, trying to give it value, just like the piece of art that Woody mentioned, it probably has little to no value. Yeah. <clears throat> is there anything else left on your list? Um, there isn't much, but there is one more testament I'd like to make, which is that it is called the Just Swim cast, um, purposefully so in the sense that we must just try and keep swimming. Um, I think that the topics we've covered today perfectly surmise our views of the world um, and how we're both just trying to keep our head afloat somewhat. Um, there are things we love about the world, definitely, and hopefully in, in some more podcasts, especially as life gets greener on the outside, we will discover some of those things. Um, but these are some of the things we're thinking about at the moment. Anything else, Woody? Um I'm glad we haven't had any audio issues. Um, <laughs> I was really worried about it. I think it. it's been fine. You know what I was thinking is um, there were a lot of times where I was thinking, well, what if I just don't know what to say next? But then there was one time where I was like, oh, I was try do you know what a mistake is when you're doing a podcast? Now I've realized it is when you forget something, is trying to remember what you've forgotten. And luckily I got there earlier. You can't I remember what been, you've forgotten. I could have just, well, I did, I did. I managed to remember it. It was my thing that I would change, which was the Romans, yeah. like protecting art and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. But I could have just gone down that rabbit hole for like a good three minutes, at which point I wouldn't have had any backup ammunition and I'd have had to leave it to you. And then we'd have been truly fucked. <laughs> Um, anyway, so we haven't had any audio issues, but throughout the course of recording this, I'm very worried about the um, the the file. Um, what has... the file you're trying to send Liza? No, the file that this is being recorded on. Because there has been a few times where OBS See, just stopped. This is what I'm saying. <laughs> this is what I'm saying. It is... This is what I'm saying. Do you know what? Did I even say at the start of this call? Sound man, Mr. Sound man. So I have a running joke with Woody, which is that he's an audio engineer. And oh my God, the amount of times I've worked with this guy. And it has just been, he's brilliant. He's brilliant. But he is his own weakness in the sense that he's probably done something really strange for us to record this call. I've done nothing I of the sort. I've done nothing of the sort. It's I bet you can just record it inside of Discord, I bet. So let, let me, exp I probably could have, but let me explain this. <laughs> <laughs> I've jiggery pokery dish just to make a jiggery pokery of jiggery. <laughs> no, I've. And now it's all fucked. And we have to do it all again. No, it's just, <laughs> it's just that my computer, the software is bad. That's the problem. It's oh, been... it's always the software's fault. It works fine for me, but the software's bad, isn't it? The, I've, the recording is fine. Like, record, it has been recording the whole time. I'm just worried that at some times... It might just disappear. It or might just disappear or something. Well, that's fine, because at least you've explained it now. At least it's on you. Yeah, it's not on me. It's not my 
not my fault. It's my and do you know what? I've actually realised this. I have an overwhelming sense of relief because this episode one, I have attempted to to drive some fo- some format or questions towards you, and in episode two, you get to do that to me. Yeah. So <laughs> and you're going to record I, your uh, one. <laughs> no, I'm completely off the. Uh, I'm off the cusp now. I've done it. You've got to keep the next one going. Okay. Um, that's fine with me. It's actually easy, you know. I know. I think it's easier. Now, I think it was more difficult being you just then. Yeah, it was. It was very difficult. Um, I'm sweating. Jeez. Put him on the spot. Anyway, I think we'll close it off there. I do hope that the file is turned out okay. And if not, hopefully I can salvage it some way. Um, yeah. So yeah, the Just Swim cast. I don't know how often we're going to do this. Do you know? Uh, weekly, bi-weekly, daily. Me, mate. Every, every hour of the day at the moment, give me something to do. <laughs> God. It's like, do you know what? Earlier, not to keep it going, but I was thinking to myself, um, I was driving back from Sainsbury's and I was like, oh no, you're, you're too depressed. Just don't do it because you you really want this to work. And if we just wait until, because the intention guys is that we've been looking at desks for Woody's shed. We've been looking at camera setups. We wanted to go the whole hog for you. I'm actually, ha- I'm kind of glad that we haven't, but because we got put into a lockdown in January, we were like, that was literally the day we were thinking of ordering the desks. It was like lockdown. You can't see each other. I was like, Oh my God. Anyway, so I was driving around and I was thinking, don't do it. And then, it got to uh, six thirty, sort of seven o'clock, when I put Claudia to not Claudia to sleep, when I put Miyako, our, ch- our kid, to sleep. And you said to me on Discord, you said, "What time?" I think if you hadn't sent that message, I probably wouldn't be doing it. And then I just said a time back, and then we just did it. I really thought I was like, "God, it's not going to be, uh, not going to be a good one," because I felt so grumpy at life. Oh, but it's actually God. been quite. You know, but that's the thing is like so a few weeks back when we were going when I was going to your house and like making music and stuff like that like at least at some point in the week I know I'm gonna have like like an hour of creativity and even if we didn't make anything good out of it it was like it was an hour where at least I was making an effort towards that it was something different now you know what I mean it's interesting because um the other day uh yesterday was it yesterday if yesterday or the day before um I crawled out of my <clears throat> dark shed, managed to clamber away myself back up to the house through the side door, and my dad was there. Um, and I said to my dad, it was just before dinner, I said to my dad, I feel, I feel useless. Like I'm, like I'm not doing, like I'm not doing anything. And I'd like, I feel bad for not doing something. And he said to me, well, this, I can't help you with that. <laughs> he was that blunt. He said, there's only like, I was really hoping him. I was like really hoping him like for him to say something like, well, you could, you could do this or you could um, do this or, you know, you could. Nah, but I think he's probably seen beyond that because if you advise someone to do something, they don't it's do not it. the same as you. Yeah, but it's also, even if you do do it, it doesn't feel the same as something you've thought of doing yourself. Yeah, it, that's, that's, like that's when I did yoga, point. if you told me to do yoga, yeah, because he already knows that, because he's yeah. a clever chap, he's seen it straight away. But like, if he tells you to do yoga, you'd be like lifting your arms, like, oh, oh, fuck, yeah. fucking great. Whereas me, for the first 20 minutes, because it was my idea, I was like, I am a new human. <laughs> you know? And it's just like that's how the mind works, isn't it? He said you've that's got how the mind works. Yeah, you've got two choices. You could either carry on being useless, and that's that's fine, or you have the choice to change it by doing something that you deem useful. I think you just. I think we got. We got to get like a tunnel into your shed. <laughs> I've got. I got. There go are lots the of tunnel. things that I want to do on my on my own as well. I just don't go through the can't tunnel. Be yeah. yeah, I know, yeah. yeah. The other day I so I've got um obviously I've got a load of lot well, not a load. I've got a decent amount of audio equipment, synthesizers, keyboards, 
drum machine. I was I was on a walk today, and I was like, "Why is he not making music every second of the day?" <laughs> well, like, why is he not? Why is he not doing it? Sometimes I do open it up, but I just don't get very far with it. Anyway, I've got um. <clears throat> if anyone knows, uh, what it's like the, like the like the book that I'm writing. <laughs> <laughs> it's called a talk box, and it's broken. Um, so yeah, the other day. <clears throat> There's about 1,200 screws on it. I took all the screws off, took it apart. And I just sat there looking at it and trying to work out what's broken. Anyway, the crux of the story is that I don't know what the crux of the story is. And that's what I do with my time. I take things apart. I put them back together, not knowing any more than I did before I opened it. Oh, that's better than me, mate. I drive around a Formula One lap, like just, oh, I can't even do that anymore. I've run out of games to play. I've run out of Netflix. I just want it over. <laughs> fucking take, fucking take me now, lockdown. You, you, you win. You, win. you know what I mean? <clears throat> you win. Well, but here's, an, here's another question, right? Yeah. Is the funniest thing about it all is they could lift lockdown right now. And you wouldn't go out. I don't know what I'd do. Yeah. I wouldn't do anything different, no. but I'd be free. Yeah. <laughs> Freedom! <laughs> oh.